Hey everyone, the Talking Dads podcast is brought to you by Little Scholars Early Learning Center. Whether your family needs infant care, a preschool program, or before and after school care, Little Scholars' highly rated step-up to quality programs provide quality early childhood education at an affordable price. Visit www.littlescholars.net to get in contact with an enrollment specialist and schedule a tour of any of their five Lake County campuses. Here's the deal. Talking Dads fans are getting a little bonus. Mention that you heard about them uh, through our podcast and when you tour and you'll receive $25 off of your registration fee. Again, that's Little Scholars Early Learning Center where children learn, play, and grow together. We are also brought to you by Pub Fredo Gastropub. Uh, Pub Fredo was voted Best Gastropub in Cleveland in 2019 by Cleveland Magazine Silver Spoon Awards. We love Pub Fredo. Their menu is chef-inspired, always pushing the limits of traditional pub fare. Uh, the other night I had a burger, I believe it was called the Pub Burger. It was incredible. Cooked perfectly. It was amazing. Uh, and you won't have a problem pairing your favorite item on the menu with their great selection of local craft beers, crafted cocktails, and of course, an amazing bourbon and whiskey selection. I went with the uh, Bullet 10-Year uh, with my Pub Burger. All of this in a cozy, fun, come-as-you-are atmosphere. You can check them out at pubfredo.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Pubfredo Gastropub. What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Talking Dads. Uh, this week uh, has our buddy Scott Goodwin. Uh, we knew him from way back in the day in high school and, and all that. Uh, but he is now a naval physician. Uh, pretty cool story of how he got to where he's at. Uh, and he's got a, a wonderful four-month-old baby boy. So it was really cool catching up with him and talking about the infant stages again. Uh, and then we dove into some military stories and did a little Cleveland sports just to catch him up, uh, things like that. So it was a lot of fun. Thanks for tuning in and stay safe. In a world where moms continue to dominate parenting authority and a father's role is minimized in society, two dads take on the toughest parenting topics on a weekly basis, all while drinking bourbon. They are the Talking Dads. Welcome to the podcast, Mr. Scott Goodwin. Uh, happy to have you. Thanks for coming on, dude. Yeah, with a uh, pleasure, guys. Uh, uh, happy to be here. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, usually how we start is we ask our guests to kind of give a dad profile. So 30 seconds to a minute on your name, your occupation, and uh, how you became, not not exactly how you became a father. We all understand how that works. Wait, no, I want, I want him to explain <laughs> I it. I have a secret. Mine's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, your family, things like that. All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, Scott Goodwin, um, uh, physician in the United States Navy. Um, you know, live in uh Portsmouth, Virginia right now. Um and uh let's see, um what else do you guys need? I just like a little bit about your, your kid or kid. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh Cole uh Cole's my son, he's uh four months and um I'm a golfaholic when I have time, workaholic most of the time. Uh otherwise uh, I have two dogs that I like to chase around and uh my wife is Sammy. And um, yeah, very cool. All right, all right. So you are a new dad. Very new. Four months in, man. How's it going? How's everything going with that? Uh, it was a, it was tough. I'll tell you. It was um, when Cole was born. Um, he was born in December. I was on uh, ICU, and we were flipping between days and nights every four days. And so, like, usually when you're when you're swinging shifts, um, you know, you have like a day to kind of like get back onto a normal schedule but with Cole he was kind of he wasn't sleeping through the night or you know when I was home during the day I wanted to see him so I wasn't sleeping as much that was that was a, that was a rough uh, a rough month um, probably the least amount of sleep I've ever gone without um, and then it's, it's, it's progressively gotten better I, I don't know that he's I don't know that I'm sleeping anymore I just think I'm getting more used to not sleeping yeah 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 you're adjusting to it All right yeah I I always think, you know, I, I love when we get to talk to new dads because it kind of brings me back to, you know, my kids are four and two or 
Jeez. In a month, yeah, we're gonna have yeah, a, be five, two months, man. it'll be five and three year old. Um, but you, you, you kind of dump all that information as they no, get older, right? I don't even know if it's like that you dump it. It's almost like you block it out. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, because you, you have a whole new set of challenges, right? Like you have yeah. a whole new, like, all right, well, now my kid's teething or now my kid's walking or, you know, whatever. And like, there's just new challenges that you have to figure out. And so maybe you're getting a little bit more sleep, but that's also being replaced with now I can't just sit and look at my beautiful child that I made. Now I'm chasing them around and making sure that they're not, right. you know, falling down the stairs or, you know, whatever. Right. There's always new challenges. And so it's always fun to kind of think back to that time um, when, yes, sleep was very limited. So, so I always like to think like the first month, maybe two months is like, you think it's the worst, right? Like, like it's amazing, of course, but like from a physical and mental standpoint, like you're just shot, right? Like, yeah. You, this is all brand new and you're trying to figure everything out and um and then it starts to get better right and so i think that's kind of where you're at now like oh i got yeah. this absolutely yeah. and i'm here to tell you <laughs> <laughs> yeah man Not so much huh <laughs> in all honesty it gets there's a every stage is a new challenge but you take it and run with it and you figure it out we always say yeah. what works for you man that's like yeah. You know, we figure out different things that work for you and uh, you get through it. But I And mean, of course, it's, it's all amazing, right? Like, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, even if days are long, you know, weeks are short and, and years are short. Like, you know, the, you know, don't blink an eye type thing is, is all well, it's, true. It's, cause... it's so true. So tonight, and I'm, we'll let you talk eventually, Scott, I promise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys are good. He was this, saying I'm that, just having I, fun, man. <laughs> I was just thinking, so it was about probably a little over three years ago. I took the, uh, it was my wife and my oldest, Sam, and I, we went out to dinner and there was an older couple, couple there and they were saying, oh man, I love that age. You know, they're like, my son is 20 something now and our kids are in their twenties, blah, blah, blah. They're like, don't, don't blink your eye. I just don't blink because it goes by like that. And you know, just enjoy everything because this is the best time. And I'm like, yeah, I know I try to take it all in and everything, but you know, I'm watching my kid tonight and he's going to be five and you know, like September and it's like, or no, he's not until January. So that's fine. January. He's still four, but still he's huge. And it's like, but I still remember like when he was a baby and it went by mm -hmm. like nothing. And it's, it's so crazy, man. I mean, for you, I'm sure the last four months are probably, well, depending on sleep, probably flown by or been really slow i don't know yeah no they've i mean they've fl they've flown by but uh i mean i would say i'd say the days are long and the weeks are short um without a doubt uh, i think I i'm kind of having that fear of uh, like a little little like fomo kind of because i'm i'm working so much and yeah. uh so i'm like rushing home and it's it's weird how like your your um you know your goals every day change innately um, you know, like before I'd get off work at, you know, six, seven or whatever, if they're a long day, it's like, oh, I can't wait to hit the gym. Can't wait to go work out, what, you know, whatever. But now it's like, I can't wait to get home and just like hang out with my little guy. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like, I, I, I feel like I'm missing so much uh, of his life when I'm at work all the time. And my wife's always like sending me little snaps of him, you know, he's like holding this toy for the first time or whatever. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's all exciting. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to believe like, it, just like the little things he does that amazes me you know like like the other day he just like started grabbing his toy and like wrestling with it and stuff like that I'm like wow like you know like he's got like a little hand-eye coordination going on and yeah you know he's like it's like it's starting to look like a little man now and he's he's cooing and trying to have a conversation with you and it's like wow before this is like a little parasite and my wife's <laughs> body and yeah. now he's got like a personality and uh yeah man yeah, it's, it's awesome it's, it's really it's, cool at that age to see them become for lack of a better term, human. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like it's almost like they're not at first because they're so incredibly dependent and they don't do anything but poop and eat and cry, you know, right. and then sleep. You know, the, they start picking up, you know, two things and now you, you've, you're at 150% of what they used to do. So it's like, oh, it's yeah. so much all at once. And it, and it's, it's really cool, man. I, I, as much as I am very content with my two children, there is a part of me sometimes that misses that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, I, I can imagine because I, I'm definitely, uh, like I said, that, that's what I'm, I have a fear of missing is just like, I know this is not going to last forever. And you, like, you, like, like I said, um, the days are long and the weeks are short. It's like, I look back and he's like, wow, he's already four months. And um, yeah, I remember when we brought him home, it just, it seems like yesterday, honestly. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely excited for the next phase, whatever it is, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it is, I'll, I'll have bourbon to get me. Yeah, through. there you go. There you go. <laughs> So think of it this way too. Uh, I like to remind myself I, I, I'm a uh, an optimist to a fault. Uh, but think of it this way too: with working all the time and missing out and everything, we live in a world now um, where not only can we continue to do our podcast, you know, like this, but your wife can send you snaps of him doing stuff and send you right. videos, and you can take yeah. videos that you can see. So you're not completely missing out right like we all have responsibilities and we have work and we have you know i mean you're a doctor in the navy i mean you 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 have responsibilities you know you took an oath and all those kind of things like those things don't go away just because we become dads um, yeah and so we're lucky that we do live in a, in a time when you know you can facetime and you can do all of these things that uh, you know i mean just think about it. even even like 15 years ago, you couldn't do any of that. Right. No. You know? No, I mean, like, think about it like this. Like, speaking of, like, being in this quarantine, like, last night we had game night with, like, two other couples, and we played Cards Against Humanity, and we had drinks, so we hung out, like, yeah, like Ian said, like, 15 years ago, sure, you could sit on the phone with them or something, but we didn't have, like, a way of doing what we're doing right now, like, you know, right, Zoom right. or like, however, whatever other apps, so, I mean, it is pretty amazing, and, uh, yeah, thank God for these. I mean, I have a million pictures and videos on my phone of my kids that I just, you know, I mean, it's cool to go back and look at them, you know, and it's it's pretty amazing to have that before you had to print up a picture or have a VHS tape or something like that, yeah. you know, when we were younger. Yeah. So, yeah. No doubt. Um, no doubt. So I was going to ask you so four months ago when Cole was born, how crazy was that just bringing him home for the first time? You know, just like that. The drive. Let's go. Let's, let's start with the drive home. How was that? For drive you? home. All right. Um, it was actually kind of surreal because uh, my um, my wife's uh, mother had come down, and um, I remember uh, like so basically my wife was my son was a little early. He was actually four days early. He was going to be born uh, like thirty eight and um, like I think thirty eight and five days or whatever. But uh, we went in and. It, the OB kind of saw some things on the rhythm strip for like the last uh, prenatal check that basically indicated we should just have the baby now rather than wait for four days. So we had had everything like planned out perfectly so that um, like, you know, my, my, our, my in-laws would come down and like, uh, you know, we'd be coming home from the hospital. Everyone would get to the house at the same time. And uh, you know, it ended up being early. So our house is kind of in disarray. Uh, I was actually on a shit. I was actually working. I was in, um, I was on anesthesia. So, uh, I had, a, I was on shift. I was shoving a tube down someone's throat and I looked at my watch and, um, I'm like, Oh, Hey, like, you know, I got to go upstairs. Like my wife, uh, has a, has a doctor's appointment. And, um, she's like, Oh yeah, go ahead, whatever. So I get up there and we find out like, you know, Hey, we need to send you to OB triage, uh, because you know, the baby's looking like something's going on or whatever. So we run over there and I walk with my wife down the hallway and then she goes into OB and I go back downstairs to surgery. And you know, I'm sitting there with the anesthesiologist. And he's like, hey, by the way, how was your uh, wife's appointment? And I was like, oh, it seems like we're probably going to have the baby today. And he's like, what? What are you doing here? Like, go home. <laughs> so I was like, all right, all right, fine. So I you know, do like another intubation or whatever. And so um, that whole weekend was just like super chaotic because I was, um, we weren't planning on having the baby that day. So we ended up having like a, you know, a surprise cesarean that day. I'm staying like most of the day at the hospital with my wife and then you know around like one two in the morning when she was ready to go to sleep or take a nap or whatever I try to run home we live like four blocks from the hospital I try to like clean up and you know get everything ready for our family to come in and at the same time I'm trying to like work so I'd you know go in in the morning and like round on patients and then I'd go back up to my wife's room in the hospital and so like by the fourth day like everything you know was ready um for us to like go home I was exhausted like I probably had hardly yeah. slept that whole week because like I said, I was like staying there supporting her in the hospital during the day. And then um, at night I was going home and cleaning and like getting everything ready. And so, like I said, I had to get up for work in the morning. Um, and so when I left, I was just like, wow, I can't believe this. Like he's finally here. Like, you know, it, I was like, it kind of goes back to the whole thing where it's like, you have this new like gear. It's like, it's like a dad gear that you just like, 
you can just thrive on like no energy just because you're you're doing what's best for your your kid um mm -hmm. you know you're super motivated it's like a motivation i've never had before but um yeah driving home was just like i can't believe this he's here like we've we've, we've thought about what he's going to be like for nine months um you know and we've, we've we've thought about you know um having a baby for so long and, and now we get to meet him you know like you see these little yeah. pictures on ultrasound you're like God, i hope my kid's cute like I hope my kid doesn't have like a deformity or something like that. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I mean, no, it's, there's nothing wrong with like you know, obviously, if people have you know, babies yeah, yeah. Or special needs or whatever. But like, no, no, of course, nobody wants that. So everyone's worried about that. And for and sure. being in the medical it's, profession, go ahead. No, no, I'm saying that's that's a huge worry, man. I mean, for anybody, you're right though, because you never know what could go wrong. I mean, even even leading up, like if there's it doesn't show any signs of anything being wrong, who knows what could happen during birth or like like Ian? I think uh, did um, Gibson have like something with the umbilical cord yeah he had the uh cord around his neck yeah but, so um, it didn't you know like that's one of the things that i always try and prep new like dads that are getting ready to you know like baby's going to be born soon is i tell them look the color of your baby is not going to be what you think like everyone, <laughs> right like, right like dude i i own daycares for a living and i've seen lots and lots and lots of babies but when they first come out they're just like this purplish color. And so, yeah. so I wasn't ready for that. And so my kid comes out and he's like purple and then the cords around his neck and like the doctor's just like, not like concerned at all. And I'm like, well, and I'm like ready to jump in. They're like, take, hey, it's yeah. okay. We're yeah, good. Right. We're good. No. Right, right. Um, but I remember that was like a big, uh, a big scare for me. Cause I was like, this doesn't seem normal, but right, I, yeah. Yeah, told, I no baby, you know, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I, I remember, um, so I actually had um, my hospital gear on. And so like we had gotten to the point in the day that uh, my wife was going to go in for the cesarean. And um, so, you know, they go in, take her back, they do this, they do the epidural and, um, you know, they come out and get me. They're like, hey, you, know, you can come back. And so I'm sitting at the head of the bed. And like, I had already worked with all the people that were like in the room. And so that, I don't think anyone in the, like only a couple people in the room actually put two and two together. It was my wife, like that was actually having the cesarean. I was like there with my, with my wife giving birth. And so I'm sitting there and like, we had talked about like, I'm going to cut the cord. And, um, and so all of a sudden, like they take the baby out and like, you know, two things here, like they take the baby out and they just run over there and like do everything, cut the cord or whatever. I'm like, what the, what the fuck guys? Like, did you know, like, yeah. cut the cord? like, cause I guess they didn't realize, you know, it was like my baby or whatever. So, um, <laughs> that, that was, that was one of the things that was kind of like, it's, sub that was like on par for the weekend because like nothing went planned right um, but then like my wife was like when he's born you have to take like all these cute pictures like we you know like we've been like you guys like taking all these pictures on our phone like we have like a whole album of like his you know all of his every day he's been born for the last four or every day he's been alive for the last four months but so my wife's like when he's born you know go over there and take pictures and i want you to cut the cord over so i get over there and I, like look at him like he was breech so he has like a misshapen he had a misshapen head and it's still a little bit um a little lopsided but not not nearly as bad as it was and I walk over, I'm like, oh my God, like, what the fuck? And so he, <laughs> he like, looks like blue, his head's like flat on one side. He's got like all this, like, you know, um, you know, like all this like crud on his face. And he, I'm just like, oh my God. Like, my, yeah, wife's, man. Like, oh. my, my wife's like, Is he, how does he look? I'm like, they're doing a good job, babe. She's like, did you take a picture? I'm like, oh, we're going to wait for them to like, you know, finish cleaning yeah. them up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Let's wait a little bit. Dude, it's yeah. so, well, I mean, it's just like anything else, right? Like we, uh, and I think it's probably true for guys or, or women, like we have this thought in our head of what it is. And that's basically based on either movies or some sort of media, whether it's a book or something like that, that we've read or we've seen pictures or we've talked to somebody that, that's gone through it. Um, but like you have this idea in your head when it, and when it's not that you're like, what, <laughs> right? What is, what's going right. on? What's wrong? You know? Cause right. I mean, I, I don't know. There's, a, you know, you can read all the books you want. And to be fair, I didn't really read any parenting books or, or birthing plan books or anything like that. We just, my wife and I were on the same page and we went through it, but like, yeah, I mean, nothing is what you thought. Like there's oh, way for sure. I thought there was going to be, there was, it was way brighter. And I mean, you maybe were, you maybe knew that, that was going to happen, but like, I don't know, man. It's just like, I mean, I, you walk into the, the delivery room and it's like stadium lighting. I'm like, what the hell is, I mean, it, it was <laughs> right. so insane in there, man. I'm like, 
all right, you know, and I'm all laid back about it. And they're, I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go out to the car real quick. You know, I'm going to go grab something really quick. And the nurse is like, you're not going anywhere. All right. She's having this baby in like two minutes. I'm like, I don't care. You know, yeah. you know, it's me in a room full of women that are just right. like, get your ass over here and hold her leg. Like, you know what I mean? And then <laughs> right. the stuff that I'm seeing, I'm like, oh my God, like, that's another thing I'm not prepared to see. I'm not prepared for it all is what that looked like. So, I mean, you guys said you had a C-section, right? Your wife yeah, we did. yeah, we did. So, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's quite, a, I mean, that's crazy in itself, but you're, you're prepared for all that stuff, being a doctor and everything, right? I mean, yeah, it was, you know, it, I, I knew generally what was going to, going to, you know, going to happen. And I, I had seen it. I had done cesarean, been involved in cesarean sections before. I, like when you rotate as a med student, you go through OB rotations and as a resident, you go on OB rotations. So, I, I knew very well, like, what was going to happen, but I'll tell you what, like, whenever your baby, like, your wife is in surgery, like, there's nothing that can pre prepare you for that, you know, you're always, there's always a certain True. level of anxiety, um, and I think almost to a certain extent, it's kind of worse, maybe, because you know all the things that can go wrong. I was just, yeah, um, yeah it was bad, like, so I think, like, medical embryology is, like, a rare form of birth control, because, like, once you see all the shit that can go wrong, and how terribly bad a baby can come out looking you're like wow i'm not sure i want to have another one like my wife is yeah. like you know we had a boy and like i'm not gonna lie like i secretly wanted a boy uh, super happy that i have a boy um I i'm sure i would have loved a girl just as well but my wife uh she's like you know i'm just happy that we have a healthy baby but now she's kind of like well if you could guarantee me that we'd have a girl then you know we'd do it again but we're both to the point where it's like we're both nervous about like all the things that could go wrong as opposed to because it's a big risk right like I mean, you know, anything can go wrong with the mom, anything can go wrong with the baby, and that's, like, super um, nerve-wracking. So, yes, to answer your question, yeah. I, was, sure, man. I, I was nervous still, even though I knew it was happening. Well, and I would think, too, there's some part of, like, now, I, we can get into what, you, like, you specialize in now. I, you said you're a physician, right? So Yeah. Yeah, I'm a so I'm I'm, I'm a resident at a Portsmouth Naval Hospital. I'm a emergency, re, uh, emergency medicine. Okay. Um, so... Okay, so I would think, and, and I'm not completely hip on uh, how a hospital really works, but I have, I have some family and friends that are in, in medicine, and, um, but I would assume, just like anything else, no matter really what your profession is, like, if it's something that you're typically doing or, or hands-on with, and then to not have the control, like, you have no control over it, like, that would bug me, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, so I think that would be tough, especially seeing somebody else, like, delivering your baby and, like, you know, like, granted, C-section, you know, so you're in surgery, but, like, right? I don't know, like, that would be tough, I think, to say, hey, well, I can technically do this, but I'm not, and yeah. I'm putting my faith into somebody else. I mean, that was tough for me, and, and, like, there's no way I could have delivered the baby on my own, right? but it was still hard for me to, like not be in control of it you know yeah no absolutely then that's that's a very valid that's a very valid point especially for a lot of physicians are like type a personalities and they're it's a very competitive field to get into medical school to begin with and so you have to be someone who thinks they can do it all um most people in this field are but um i think that's why they say like you're never supposed to doctor your family or your loved ones because you have to be objective yeah always and it's hard to be objective if you have like uh, a variable like that when you're when you're that you're considering um so you know it was it was like it was very hard just to kind of like sit back and remember like hey like i work in this hospital i'm a doctor here but like i i'm not a doctor right now you know like i have to yeah. just be here and support my wife and i remember like i was my my responsibility in the in the or when we were waiting for my son to be born was like to find michael buble christmas songs that my wife oh, wanted man. to hear while we're like uh while we we're waiting for you know, the baby to come out because it was, we, he was actually born on the 20th of December. So we're Christmas yeah. baby pretty much. So like, that was yeah. my responsibility. So it was nice to keep my mind off of like everything else going on. I'm like, okay, what song am I going to play next? Right. right. <laughs> it was a big responsibility. Don't get me wrong. No, I mean, oh yeah, man. It's very important. <laughs> <laughs> That's super cool. So Scott, yeah, yes. how did you, um, just to change gears a little bit, how did you <laughs> find yourself in the Navy? Like, was this your plan? Um, like I, to be fair, like I remember, you know, hanging out at football practice and stuff like that back in high school, but I, I don't really know, uh, where your journey, uh, kind of went after that. I mean, I know I left for the Marine Corps right after I graduated. Sure. So, you know, aside from Steve and a couple other guys, like, 
you know, I didn't really know any, anyone else what they were doing. Sure. Um, so right after high school, I, um, I took a scholarship to play football at uh, Bowling Green State University and played there for a couple of years. Uh, but just a caveat before I go on, like I had always actually wanted to be in the military. Um, I think growing up, um, I loved uh, fighter pilot, like fighter jets. I was obsessed with them. Like, I had these like little toys. I'd run around and play with them and like fly them around and I could name like all these different like military aircraft. And honestly, like I think if, if I wouldn't have gotten an offer to play college football, I probably would have joined the military. Um, so anyway, when I got the offer to play football, it was kind of a no brainer. Like, how do I turn on a scholarship? And um, when I got to Bowling Green, I don't know, I think. Uh, you know, football for me was something that I really enjoyed the camaraderie a lot more than I enjoyed the actual game. I, I did enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. Like, you know, it was, it was an amazing thing to do, but uh, when you get to college, um, you know, the guys that you like grew up playing football with and the guys that you're on your team, like they're your best friends. Um, it's not that way in college and the camaraderie just wasn't there. And I, I just really didn't feel comfortable at Bowling Green I really didn't feel like I was challenged um and so I gave up my scholarship actually and uh Paul Berger as you guys may or may not know is yeah. my best friend um and when I decided I was gonna kind of give up my scholarship uh, and I didn't need to figure out what I was gonna do I uh went to I called him up one day I was like hey man like you know what are you doing you know he's like Dude, you should come to Baldwin Wallace and Baldwin Wallace is a like a really good school yeah um, I probably honestly didn't have any business like academically going there because in high school like football was something that like was my first priority and then I just I was I was eligible that's all I cared about with right, academics right. um but anyway when I got there um you know I had no idea I really enjoyed school as much as I as I ended up loving but um, I get there I take this class and I'm almost certain like my uh my psychology I was I was a psychology major when I transferred in and um this guy's looking to become a clown uh, like, my grades were, like, so bad at Bowling Green, and here I am in, like, this, like, you know, kind of ritzy school or whatever, and he's, like, so what do you want, what do you want to study, and I was, like, oh, you know, like, psychology, and this guy's, like, a PhD in psychology, he's got all this, like, crazy research, and he's, like, this, this asshole is, like, there's no way he's gonna come in my psychology program, so he puts me in this, like, higher up, like, neuroscience program, and I, did, I hadn't even, like, taken basic biology, or well, I did at Bowling Green, but, like, I, like, probably copied all the questions right. on, like, all the tests. <laughs> had like no idea like anything in biology what it was so I was like what, what long, long story short I was like way out of my league um but it was it was kind of like a kick in the balls and so I took this neuros neuroscience class and I ended up falling in love like with the brain and like um you know, integrating like people's like personalities and psychology and like how the brain actually like works organically and that kind of took me down like the pre-med school path and then you know uh after Baldwin Wallace I um you know I had like a pretty decent GPA um, but I had uh, you know a long way to go because med school is like a super competitive field um, and so I had to end up going to grad school in case I applied for grad school um, to the GRE got in um, and then I was doing research for a while and I ended up you know it was either research or med school at that point and I ended up just realizing you know medicine is what I want and so after med school or after grad school at case for two years um, you know, I went on to med school, but, um, yeah, it was definitely not a linear path like most people have out of high school. Um, yeah. I kind of had to make my mistakes and learn from them and, uh, That's you know, I, I don't regret it. I have a lot of good life experiences, um, especially compared to some of my colleagues, uh, some of my younger colleagues, um, they're still kind of immature and, you know, um, I think it, it definitely benefited me going through the, the process that I went through to get to where I'm at. So, I, so I'm a little bit confused then. So are you a civilian doctor at a naval hospital? No. Okay. So how do I, how do I get into the military? Sorry. So getting into medicine. So when I was sitting in, uh, I was sitting at a, uh, we had these like pre-med days where we'd have people come in, um, for, uh, like, you know, different residency programs or like, you know, just interesting people yeah. in the field of medicine. And so one day like a Navy recruiter came in and he was like, Hey, by the way, like, you know, med school is really expensive. You can get it paid for and it wasn't even the fact that I could get it paid for. It was just like, holy shit, like, I've always secretly wanted to be in the military. Like, it's probably what I would have done with my life if I didn't play football. And now I had this opportunity to, like, get med school paid for and be in the military. And it was just, like, the perfect opportunity. So I signed a scholarship. It's called an HPSB scholarship. It's the Health Professions um, – I forget what it's called. Like, uh, Health Professions Scholarship Program Scholarship. Um, and so basically – they paid for med school. So every year that they pay, 
um, I am obligated uh, one year of active duty service. Um, so when I graduated from med school, I went to OODS in Providence, Newport, or I'm sorry, Providence, Rhode Island, um, and got commissioned as an officer. And so I'm uh, an active duty lieutenant in the Navy, um, and I'm um, training as a resident in emergency medicine. Actually, caveat though, um, the, the Navy works differently. So most, I mean, Ian, you probably know this, um, like the Navy supplies all the medical personnel for the Marines. Mm -hmm. And so in July, I'm actually PCSing to Camp Lejeune. I'm gonna be the battalion surgeon for the 2-2 division of the Marines. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. Some of my most, uh, it, I, I don't know, some of the best dudes I ever knew were Navy corpsmen. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, when you, when, you, when you get to the fleet as a Marine, um, especially when you're enlisted, like some of the best advice I ever got was make friends with the corpsmen. Like, sure. you always want to be friends with the corpsmen, you know what I mean? And right, so like, right. I can go into the, the benefits of that, uh, you know, drinking till two in the morning and then you have to get right. up for PFT and you go run and get some, get, get an IV at 4 a.m. <laughs> right. So, you know, that was right. always fun. Um, but no, in reality, I mean, you know, Marines are, known for being kind of a different breed and and we kind of um you know all the services have some fun with each other and everything but sure. i don't think that you'll ever hear marine say anything bad about a corpsman like it's the best you know what i mean so yeah, like some of those yeah guys, no, absolutely most of them actually most of the corpsmen i ever worked with were more badass than than some of the some of the marines that i had to work with so um <laughs> That's super cool, though. That's exciting. Lejeune is, uh, I didn't get to spend too much time at Lejeune, uh, just at, uh, you know, SOI or whatever after boot camp. But um, yeah, it's, you know, they, I think that we call it the armpit of America. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I, honestly, there doesn't look there's a whole lot there. Um, there's probably enough to get in trouble, oh, yeah. um, especially if you're younger. Yeah. Um, but my wife and I are looking at a house in Sneeds Ferry. Um, and it looks like a nice area. I mean, we're close to the beach and the base is huge. Um, I'm excited about it. Honestly, I'm actually deploying, uh, I'm deploying in October. Um, I don't know exactly where I'm going. I'm probably going on a, on a Mew cause I know I'm hitting okay. several different countries. Um, but yeah, so I finished. So the way it's kind of weird, it, like my story is a bit convoluted. It's kind of like, again, on par, not a, not a linear course, but so most people in civilian world, they go into residency, they finish residency and, you know, they, they go as, on as attending and work as like a licensed physician in whatever specialty that they're practicing. Um, for, for, the, for the military and, and actually for any uh, medical program, you actually have a medical license after your first year of residency, which is what I'm finishing in like two months. So I'll have a medical license. So the military capitalizes on that. And so half of my class of residents, they're finishing and half of them are going out to the fleet. Um, and so I'm, I'm in the five that are going to the fleet. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm super nervous about it. Cause it's a big responsibility. Like, uh, you know, I'm going to have, you know, several hundred, you know, probably six, 700 Marines. I'm going to be responsible for their medical health, you know, their medical readiness. You know, I have to train all the corpsmen. I have to supervise the, um, independent duty corpsmen. And then if shit goes wrong when we're deployed, you know, I'm going to be, have to be the one that, you know, keeps these people alive until we can medevac them. Yep. Um, and so for one year of training, it's like a big responsibility, honestly. Um, but I, I couldn't actually be happier about it because I think the opportunity to go down with the Marines and I've always been an athletic guy and always like re really staying fit. And, um, I think I'm going to fit in perfect down there. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to it. You will. I, awesome. I think for, for anyone, I mean, I would tell this to Marines going out to the fleet and I would tell it to a corpsman or I would tell it to anybody, you know, a civilian contractor that was, was getting attached to a unit or whatever is realize that the E3 and E4 18 or, you know, 19, 20 year old Marine knows more than you could possibly imagine about how the unit works. And so if you trust in those dudes mm -hmm. and don't pretend like you know everything, you know what I mean? And like, I don't Absolutely. think you'd be that kind of guy, but like mm -hmm. we, we, I mean, we used to say it when, when Marine officers would get attached to the unit, you know, you got a 22 year old butter bar, you know, second Lieutenant that, you know, hasn't done anything but go to school so far and, and go to OCS. Right. 
and then they would come in and be like, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. And we're like, dude, we've been in right. 12 <laughs> months already. Like, don't I've tell me here. how it works. Right, right. Um, no, honestly, uh, what you're describing, I think, is um, – it's just like it's a good trait in life to have is just be is be humble. Um, humility will get you a long way um, in life, and I think even more so in, in medicine because you know I would compare what you're describing to like the nursing staff. Um, you know, at a hospital, you walk in and like as a as a as a first year intern or a first year resident, um, you know, you come on, you're like, hey, I'm you know I'm a doctor or whatever, and, and right, you don't right. It, but these nurses have been you know um, you know practicing medicine under a physician or with the guidance of a physician for 20, 30 years, um, yeah. and they have, they can make or break you. They know um, what's up. Right. Yeah, exactly. And they, like, they have all the real world practice. Um, we may have all the book smarts and the knowledge or whatever, but you know, they, those nurses will really make or break you. And so that's exactly, I think what you're describing. And that's kind of the attitude I have going into Lejeune, um, is to really rely on, especially my senior, um, enlisted, like my chiefs, um, chief, yeah. you know, and, and like, and there's nothing, uh, obviously you can learn from anybody, but, my, my the information that I was given was like you have to like really rely heavily on your chiefs because um, they will guide you they, they'll know everything that you need to know um, you know my job will be medic as a, as a medical um, like basically I'll be the main point of contact for the commander of the battalion in terms of like any medical advice you know right. does this like you know we're, let's say we're deployed on um, on an LHD and you know a, a sailor a marine probably has an appendicitis and it's like hey do we, do we turn this boat around? Do we medevac him? Like, what's, what's the timetable? Can we wait? Can we manage this here? Um, but, you know, I'll know that stuff. But in terms of, like, how the military works, yeah, like, the E3, the E4, those guys will have way more knowledge than I ever have. That, that's super cool, man. I'm excited for you. That's a, you're going to learn so much um, just about, like, I mean, I know I did. Like, once I took a step back and and said, you know, once I did, you know, took my, my first year or two and, and did all the crap work and the hazing and all that other kind of bullshit that I had to go through. Once that was over and you start to like, almost look at it from above and say, all right, this is how this works. And it's amazing, you know, for as much as I bitch sometimes about like the four years that I did, I loved it. Like, and I, and I can look back at it now and say, holy crap, like, you know, what a well-oiled machine to, to be able to train these kids, you know, cause there are, there are a bunch of kids that are doing the job that you, that needs to be done. And, and mm -hmm. I think to be a part of that is, is really cool. And you'll learn a lot, not only about, you know, leadership and, and, and things like that, but you'll learn a lot about yourself, you know? Sure. Absolutely. So what's your, uh, what's your favorite, uh, boot camp story? Boot camp story. Ooh. <laughs> Um, all right. So, <laughs> so probably two thirds through boot. So Marine Corps boot camp is 13 weeks long. And so probably about two thirds of the way you're, you're, everyone is now disciplined, you know, like the first probably the first phase is about breaking you down. The second phase is about building you back up and teaching you things. And the third phase of boot camp is like polishing you and making you into a Marine. Right. And so, mm -hmm probably right when the third phase started, um, we got to do the O course. And so the obstacle course is pretty awesome. Like it is, um, you know, the, the, the end of the obstacle course is it's called the slide for life. And it's a big zip line that you hold on to and you're going over this lake. And at the end of it, you just let go. And, and that's the signifying that you finished the O course. And, it, and it's a pretty tough course. Um, I certainly probably couldn't do it now, but you know, back when I was yeah. years old, I was, I was killing it, you know? And so we had run it through in practice for a couple of times, but like you, ha it's some, one of the things that you have to pass. And so we're sitting there on in line and, and uh, two guys go at a time. And so I think our platoon had, I don't even remember what the size of our platoon was, maybe 40 some guys. I, I, don't, I don't even remember. Um, but so you're waiting in line and you're just kind of, and, so this is probably late August in uh, South Carolina. So it's right outside of Hilton Head, Paris Island. Right. And so this is prime um, sand flea time. And so you get these little mm. sand fleas all over you and they, you know, whatever. And so we all have to stand at parade rest, you know, while everyone is going. And so I'm sitting there and I'm looking around and I got these, there's like three sand fleas right here on my face that I am just sitting there. I mean, they are just eating me alive. 
And so I'm looking around and I think I'm safe. And I just kind of go like that, you know, and my drill instructor from behind me that I didn't see fucking runs over, jumps over like other recruits and gets in my face and everything. So my qualifying time that I, or my, my time to qualify on the O course, I had to run like this. <laughs> so I was now one armed. So awesome. I'm doing like monkey bars and I'm like, <sighs> Uh, trying to yeah. climb this big freaking ladder and you know do all this i'm trying to hang on the slide for life and you know i ended up passing it but like horrible time horrible form everything but i ran the whole thing just like this so yeah that that's was great awesome. yeah i think i think um you know i think in order to be a marine drill instructor you have to have a sick sense of humor oh it's like God. a prerequisite yeah, sure <laughs> it, I had, I mean, I can remember every single one of my drill instructors. So I had three drill instructors. I remember them, you know, it was Buckles, Griffin, and God, I can't remember the last guy's name, but we always called him Skeletor because he's this, I mean, when I, he looked like, um, who's the dude in Gladiator, the big black dude that like, oh yeah, you know, I can't remember that guy's name. He's an amazing actor. He was in a yeah. couple other movies, whatever, but like this dude had the most terrifying, terrifying voice. And he was just like, he's probably like six, four skinny, but like built. And like the dude would just jump over everything and get in your face with like, you just never even knew he was there. <laughs> um, Roberts. That was his name. Sergeant Roberts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, like those guys, I don't, they, they're machines, you know? Uh, right. I, there's a lot of guys that are, oh man, I want to be a drill instructor. And I'm like, I don't think I could do that, man. I don't think I could be that intense <laughs> yeah. all the time, you know? Yeah, for sure. There's, there's a lesson to be learned there, E. You said like, drill instructor's always watching. They always see everything, right? Always. Yeah, so a lesson the kids should take from us is we're always watching these little bastards. Yeah, that's no. true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have, to, I have to start getting like a third eye, like, you know, oh, like, yeah, in the back of my head. They, yeah. you'll, you'll be you'll find out quick too man they, they start trying to pull shit real real early too man my kid is always trying to you know just making up stories already at four years old yeah what? you know he's beating up his little brother and i hear i hear my son ben who's the youngest i hear him crying and screaming about something i walk in the room and sam's just standing there like what can happen he's like, <laughs> he's like he fell on his own i'm like no he didn't i'm like you pushed yeah. him he's like, no he's like he fell on his own I don't know what happened head. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay, here we go. Already at four years old. Yeah, yeah give, give people do that sometimes. We're like, I'm like, did you and your sister eat all the Cheetos? Like, did you guys climb up into the pantry and get like yeah. your, your, your special snack? I'm like, I don't know what happened. Like, the door <laughs> opened and the bag came out and it was empty. I'm like, <laughs> I, they got freaking orange all over their face and hands. Yeah. And I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> right, right. That's great. Yeah. I was, I was watching these, um, I was watching these YouTube videos and it was like uh dad's reaction times and it's like little kids have like this on this disproportionate head that just like carries all of their weight um and so um like uh basically these these kids were like falling off the couch and the dad be like looking at the tv and all of a sudden his hand would just like go out at the back of his and just like catch the kid as they're falling i'm like i don't have that yet so hopefully uh it's, cold real. Isn't. it's real and you won't know that you have it until you have it but steve has the ultimate dad reaction uh oh at your house yeah at my house we were on the deck and oh all the girls were out oh it was like a, their mother's day present right like we yeah, all got we, them, we like, sent all the wives out for like, like years yeah day out type of thing and so it was like me steve uh brian perry and raj and all the kids so there was four of us and i think at the time just five kids five kids yeah, yeah. And so we're hanging out and we're like, oh, let's take a good picture of all the kids. And so like my deck has like two three, or three steps. Three steps, yeah. Three steps. And I, I, like, I like placed my son, Ben, who could barely sit up was, on his own. Like I, He was what, like four months old? God, I don't even know, man. Five months I, old, maybe? I mean, I yeah, know. around there. He, but yeah, he was, he was little. He was yeah. a little bit older than that because it was like... Oh, yeah, no. It was Mother's Day, so... Yeah, so he would have been like... He was little. Seven, eight and months. he was... Whatever. We had him up on the step and we propped them all up next to each other. And uh, I'm taking a picture of my camera out and I see him going forward. And I don't know how I got there. I don't even know how, how it happened, but I caught him. He fell forward. I caught him like right about an inch away from the, the second step, caught his head and just picked him up and scooped. Like 
It was, was a, but it was funny though. Their reaction, like Ian and Raj and Perry's reaction was just amazing. They're like, how the Because we're like behind him and we're trying to get all the kids to you know, <laughs> stay focused and get a picture or whatever. And like, we all see it happening. And Steve's the one that got the camera or whatever. And he's, it was amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. It happens, man. I, you, video you of that. I, I know. I wish I would get a picture or video of that because that was uh, one of my. Uh, Definitely, my dad reaction kicked in, yeah. man. You get yeah, it. You, you don't even know you have it. But it's you a have real it thing, <laughs> for sure. That's a, good, that's a good thing. I'll tell you, I, I feel like I have it with, um, I have it with some of these patients sometimes. Like, uh, you see some real characters in the ER, and you just have to have like kind of like your head in a swivel, because like some of these people just come in like completely unstable, and you never know what they're gonna do. And uh, we had this one lady come in the other day, and um, she's like full blown psychotic. And she just like takes a swing at one of the nurses, just trying to put an IV in her arm. I'm like, God damn! Like, she could, she almost, she almost connected too. It's just like, damn. you know, you can never let your guard down. But you know, I, I guess I have it when it comes to being at work. But um, you know, if it, not, not yet with Cole. He's still a little too stationary though. So I have hope. I have yeah. hope that yeah. he'll develop it. <laughs> those uh, yeah, those those super it, skills will will come back to you. Yeah, it's it's amazing because one day they're just not moving. And the next thing you know, they're all over the house. And like, you're like, yeah. then you're starting to block everything off. And that's when you really got to wake up. Like you could be tired now yeah. and kind of relax, but <laughs> once yeah. they're moving around the house, it's a whole nother story. It's well, like it's one of those things, right? Like you, 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 man, I can't wait till he's moving around and walking. It's going to be so cool. And then like four days into him, like actually walking, we're like, will you just, Why? Yeah. <laughs> just sit still. Yeah, I'm you sure. You should have tied pillows to them because they're just falling on their faces yeah. constantly, bouncing right. off everything. It's a... I feel I, my son probably thinks I'm so lame because every time I come home, it's it's kind of nice because he's he's not super mobile yet. And so like we come home and like we can put him on his play mat or whatever, and we can play. And we like we have like this uh, like just array of like all t different types of like play toys for him. Um, but like we you know we take him out of one and put him in the other. It's like a line. Uh, but anyway, like it, it I, he probably thinks I'm so lame because like. I just want to come home and I'm so tired. I'm like, let's take a nap, buddy. Let's take a nap. Like, <laughs> he's probably like, fuck you, dad. Like, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, man. Like, low key, I always say, like, it sounds terrible. But I love when my kids are a little bit under the weather. When they love to cuddle. What they want to do is just like snuggle and just like yeah. watch a movie or something like that. And, yeah. Like, never do that, right? Like, even when we have like movie night or whatever, they can't sit still. Like, they're excited, you know, this and that. So, like, when they're a little bit under the weather, just a touch, like, a little bit of a fever, but it's not too bad. Like, they just, right. they're all toasty, and, like, it's great. Like, I'll just, yeah. you know. That is, that is very true, man. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm probably, I think I'm probably in, like, the, uh, like, the golden spot right now, because my son is, he's awake enough, like, he's awake enough during the day that, like, like he'll cuddle with you and not actually fall asleep. Um, and so, like, I get home from work, and I get to, like, Talk about being like a dad, put on like my dad robe and like I got home tonight, uh got in the shower, put on my dad robe, I got a little glass of bourbon, it's like walk around with my son. It's like sleeping on my shoulder, I'm like it's perfect. Great. He doesn't grow up anymore. Like I know, man. Yeah, that's fantastic. that's the best. That is the best right though. They're like I mean, I remember those days of just like sitting on the couch, cuddling with them like in the middle of the night. And it's so relaxing. And, you know, you know how it goes. Like the doctors are like, do not, if you're tired. Don't hold the baby and fall asleep because you could, you know, su you know, yeah. you suffocate or whatever. You could roll around. Yeah, but sure. I mean, I'll tell you what, man, when you're that tired and you're holding the baby in the middle of the night, it's like, oh my God, it is. I would just be, yeah, I know it was bad. It's Thank tough. God nothing happened. But. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, it's really tough. And like, I actually, I actually gave a presentation uh, to my residency on like SIDS, which is like sudden infant death syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know like all the things that you can't do and we violate like half of them. Just because it's not practical, right? Like, you, like they'll say, like no pillows in the bassinet, no blankets in the bassinet, no swaddling. Like, you know, like also just gonna like lay naked in the middle of the room, and, like you know, with a diaper on and fall, yeah, asleep, exactly. fall asleep like that. Like, um, and then you have to think about like if your kid's up at all hours of the night, then you're gonna be up. So naturally, like you're gonna do anything you can to like make them comfortable. So Absolutely. I mean, we keep him in the bassinet for he'll sleep. We got this like little marshmallow suit. Looks like the Michelin Man. Oh yeah, yeah. We tra we transitioned away from uh, the swaddle. And now he's just like we just like lay him in bed. He's just like yeah, the like arms are out. The, yeah, stuck on the bassinet. Yeah, it's Looks like, like Randy from the Christmas Story. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> his, his his only his only form of defense. Yeah, or dead. <laughs> I can't put my arms down. Yeah. yeah, 
But it's um, funny though. It's funny how quickly you break the rules, you know, with everything. Like everybody has like these these plans when they they're like, okay, I'm gonna do this. We're not gonna do this. Uh, my kid's not gonna do, do any screen time. We're gonna do strictly learning tools and this and that. But it's amazing how quickly, you, like as a parent, you're like, oh my god, I just need a minute to just like some quiet here. Have the iPad. Like just, I mean. And yeah. you see with so many people, like the people we know that have that plan of like, we're not going to do any screen time. We're not going to do any TV no shows, nothing. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> nothing, imagine yeah. that. Yeah, imagine Those, that. Yeah, they break the rules real quick. With <laughs> Yeah, man, because you know what? It, well, I think what you start to realize eventually is um, it is more important to take care of yourself first you know, it's like when you're on a plane, they say, oh, if you, you know, I don't know if you've flown. Put with the your mask son. on before you help your. You do your, mask, your own mask first, and then you take care of your kids. Right. And the reason for that, though, is because if you're not healthy, if you're not aware and awake and, and everything else, how can you possibly take care of somebody else? And so. Right, exactly. You know, it's okay to give some screen time or to do a, a cupcake for breakfast in the middle of quarantine because, you know what, it's. We're like six weeks into this and you know, it is right. what it is. Like the kids are yeah. going to be, be okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you can take care of yourself and give yourself some time to recover and to take a mental break. Like I think it's a hundred percent worth it. Yeah. For I, think, sure. I think too, like, um, you know, we all have this like ideal picture of what our kids going to be like. And we, we want our kids to make none of the mistakes that we've made. So we want to give them this perfect life. But in reality, like, everything in moderation is probably best, right? Like, yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to raise this like super awkward kid. That's like, you know, doesn't watch TV or like, you know, doesn't go out, you know? So um, I don't know, like, you know, a little bit of, you know, TV here and there is it's probably normal. And think about it, like before, you know, all this research came out or whatever, like people were, people's kids were watching TV plenty and, you know, eating sugar and whatnot. And they were doing just fine. Um, Absolutely. Many a year. So I was raised on video games and Saturday morning cartoons and hell yeah. Peanut butter and jelly. Guess what? Yeah, I'm exactly. <laughs> yeah, ex yeah, exactly. No, it's it's so true. And like, um, you know, you just have to let them. You have to let them be kids, man. They have to let them, you know, live it up, make mistakes, and you know, fall a little bit. You know, learn how to walk. You know, no, no, no kid comes out learning how to walk perfectly. They don't come out, you know, running down the hallway. They they take their lumps. They fall. They learn. And you have to just kind of. It's hard to as a parent to let your kid fail because you want them to succeed. Right. But in order to succeed, you have to let them fail. Right. Um, Absolutely. So that's the best lesson. Yep. Hundred percent. No doubt. So <laughs> what? So what are you guys? What are you guys up to these days? Other than just uh, this, this, this rock and podcast. Yeah, Shit, man. Is, uh, the podcast is a, a wonderful. Um, you know, in normal times, uh, Steve and I started this because our kids are roughly the same age and we got to bounce everything off of each other and we were talking about dad stuff and drinking bourbon anyway. And so we're like, let's put some shit out there and see what happens. Like, I don't know, maybe Steve, you feel differently, but like, I thought we were going to do it for a couple months. And like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, dude, when we, when we first started this whole thing, we started like with what, like uh, the lapels on our Lapel collars and like, we, yeah, exactly. We were like, we're like, let's try it. Let's see what happens. It didn't seem realistic. And then, uh, we kept going with it and I mean shit we're over a year now and we're having such a good time with it we're having awesome guests and uh yeah like like go back to what you said Ian like I did not see it going too far actually yeah. and uh I, there was a point too where Ian and I got together and we're like what do you think like what are we gonna do you want to continue or do you just want to just give it up and we're like you know what? let's just let's keep going and see where it goes and uh so I think it's been pretty awesome, man. We've had a lot of amazing guests. You know, we have a great time. Typically, we're not doing this, you know, the, the whole Zoom thing. We have the, our studio, which I really miss, man. Like, the whole too, man. being in the studio. I was telling Liz today, I'm like, the Zoom crap. I mean, for people out of state and everything, this is cool. This is fine. And that's, you know, every now and then. But, like, the last six weeks we've been doing this, I, I told her today, I'm like, I just wish I could just have – the mic. I wish I could be in the studio yeah. and have it just all normal next to our guests and just yuck it up that way. It's just a different feel. It, it's, it's a super different feeling. And, and like Steve said, this is amazing. And like, normally, like we probably would have never reached out to you and been like, Hey man, like you're someone that, you know, we would like to talk to, you know, just because it's not 
you know, you couldn't just come to downtown Willoughby on a Saturday night yeah. or whatever and, right. and hang out. Um, but it is, it is so much fun. Um, especially when it's somebody that we don't know very well, like it's sure. so much fun to really get in there and have a conversation. Um, we used to joke before that it was like, it was almost a break from your phone. You know what I mean? Like, cause we're all so busy and we're always doing this and doing whatever. And like, you know, and if your phone's down, it's cause you're with your kids. And then when you have a break, like, what do you do? You check your phone. And, but like when you're with adults, like, you know, sometimes that doesn't always happen. And, and so like, just to have a couple guys together and having a couple drinks and then like your phone's away and you're just having a conversation for, you know, an hour, it's, it's two so hours, great. five hours, whatever it ends up being like, um, it was, it was a really good break from day to day life, you know, and yeah. we love doing it. And, you know, here we are a year and change later and we've got like sponsorships and like, it's just weird that this has gone where it's gone. And, and I think that part of the reason is we've always had zero expectations, you know? Yeah. We thought it would be fun to talk to each other. It's a good excuse that Steve and I get to hang out once a week, you know, again, in normal times, like we get together once a week and we have a couple of drinks. Um, but at the end of the day, this thing has just kind of like grown and grown and grown and, you know, who knows where it's going to go, but it, it, it is, it's a ton of fun. And the cool thing is, is hearing guys, you know, six months later and like dude what you told me about like how to do this or how to take care of that like i use it every single day or i got my brother-in-law you know to listen and his kids do soon and and you know he's not as nervous anymore you know whatever shit like that is kind of cool yeah it is it's it's been a like just getting together with people and having conversations like we're doing right now it's it's like therapy too because like you could yeah. Because there's a lot of things that you're thinking about, and um, it's cool to sit with people and hear their stories and realize sometimes that this is going on in my life, this is going on with my kid, and you hear somebody else bring it up and talk about it, and you're like, okay, maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe I'm not the only person that has this going on right now with my kid. You know, yeah. so it's, um, it's really awesome, and it's, for Ian and I, too, it's like, like we say, we're, we're still kind of new at being dads, you know, we're like four, almost five years in, but so some of these guests that we have, they you know, with older kids and everything, we could take stuff from them as well. And, uh, or even people that have kids the same age, like different ideas that they have, different uh, routines and things like that, that I never thought about. Like, it's like, holy shit, that's an amazing idea. I should do that. And it's, uh, it's been a really great thing for us. I mean, I feel like it's made, a, made me a better parent. Um, 100%. You know, I mean, I, and it helps to realize too, it helps you realize sometimes too, like, um, with kids and everything, especially now with being in this quarantine, like your patience is like at a, it, I mean, with the kids, it's like, man, I feel like I'm going crazy sometimes, but it helps you to realize sometimes that I need to take a step back and realize, Hey, this isn't that big of a deal. I need to chill the hell out. Is it really that bad? Or, you know what I mean? Um, well, it I, also I, helps I, you to like realize those types of things. It helps you to appreciate your kids too and appreciate being a dad and everything. So, well, I think to your point, like I, all right, so like full disclosure, like we are very real on this. Like we have no agenda, you know, whatever. Like we kind of tell it exactly how it is with our kids and stuff, like especially when we're talking about our kids. But the reality is, is like, I, I think it's human nature. We try to project all the, the super positive stuff that we do or we've heard or what works and, and everything else. And, and yes, we're not usually highlighting the time that like I was this close to just giving my daughter <laughs> the other day. you know what I mean like yes I almost got there but I didn't you know whatever but I am never as patient with my kids as I am for like the two to three days following a good podcast you know what I mean because sure. because it really forces you to kind of step back and and evaluate how what kind of dad do you want to be you know yeah and so um I love like I'll I'm weird like a I don't really listen to music anymore. I like only listen to podcasts, which is kind of insane, but um, I always try and like learn something or, or hear something. And, and a lot of times what I do is I try and hear how other people articulate thoughts and how they yeah. move from, from different topics and things like which that. Which you can take a lot from that too. I mean, yeah, you can. Um, but like, sometimes I'll like re-listen to some of our old ones and I'll be like, Oh man, I totally forgot about that dude. And he told us this and that. And, like, so it's always a good reminder for me even to say, all right, when I get home from work today, 
I'm going to resist the urge to kick my feet up and play a game on my phone for 20 minutes. Yeah. Even though that relaxes me, like I'm going to go right in there and I'm going to try and build the biggest tower I can with my daughter or, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. Well, and that's, that's completely true too. Cause I mean, it is so easy. And I can't remember if that was with us that someone said, never be too tired. Yeah. You know, cause yeah, your kids are going, going to, they're going to want your attention. You're tired. Sure. You're tired and everything. You want to just come home and relax, but you have a few hours before they fall asleep. Right. Why don't you just kick ass for those few hours, be everything that you can be right. You know, for them. And then when they're done, they go to sleep. Then you can relax finally. You know I mean? Sure. I mean, it sucks some days, but it's not that hard. You know, it's hard. Mean, after we do a podcast for those like two or three days, like I'm freaking super dad. Oh yeah. Yeah. And then like, you know, Wednesday, Thursday hits and I'm like, I feel myself, my patience is like gone. And so like, if I'm self-aware about it enough, I will, I'll go listen to like last week's episode or whatever. Yeah. And be like, okay. Like I got, it. <laughs> all right. you know, but if I don't, it's like, Oh shit. And then I have a podcast coming up and I'm like, all right, I got to prepare for this. I'm like, all right, I'm good again. You know? So <laughs> I think that's yeah. a huge benefit. Like from our point of view, we get to do this every single week. Yeah. It's, a, it's awesome, man. Um, and also, yeah, I, go ahead. I think, I think the cool thing that what you guys are doing is this is like a really like awesome transition to like the next stage of our lives, right? Like we're all having kids now. If you look like our the group of guys that we all, you know, grew up with and, you know, our age, we're all having kids now. It's like, you know, four or five years ago, not everyone had kids or, you know, like 10 years ago, most of us definitely didn't have kids. Um, and it's just like, it's just kind of a reminder, like time is, you know, life is, life is passing by, you know, like we've all kind of gone our separate ways and, you know, and, you know, we've kept relationships with some people, you know, have, have a lot of different life experiences, but it kind of like takes you back a little bit too, to think like, wow, like I have a kid, you know, Yeah. this is like a super, this is like a really cool way. Uh, what, what you guys are doing to kind of like stop and think like, wow, like we're at this phase in our lives. where like, actually we're dads, you know, like yeah. we're getting to shape another life. We're getting to, you know, you know, raise a little kid. And um, yeah. yeah, it's a super, super awesome experience for sure. Yeah, yeah we, we said at worst, you know, if we never make a cent and we, you know, make fools of ourselves and, you know, whatever, at worst, we have now documented at least, you know, a year and three months of three months, yeah. being dads, yeah. you know? Yeah, and no, so, for like, sure. Maybe we'll never, ever revisit it, you know, but I think it would be actually kind of cool one day for like, you know... I don't know, sit down with my son and be like, dude, this is what I thought of you when you were this. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, that is no, true, man. It's a no lot doubt. of doubt. Yeah, no doubt. There, there you go. go. What are you drinking? Uh, just a uh, classic. Just, uh, actually, this is from my wedding. Um, it's been sitting on the shelf for a while. Um, I don't even know what it is. Just, just classic bourbon, I guess. Okay. So that was a good Man, I don't know. I not not you asked. I have to go check. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't had Blattens in a while since I've had it at your house, and it's so good, man. So good. We I would like to really. We've never done a review on Blanton. I would really like to do it. What is this one? The, you have all the. You already have all the the horses, right? No. What do you have? Oh, yeah, it's just, I think it's just your basic bitch, uh, Jim Beam bourbon, man. I don't know if there's anything there special I'm missing here, but Dude, yeah. Jim Beam, uh, like Jim Beam white label is where I fell in love with bourbon, you know? So, you know, then it turns into, you know, then it turns into what he's got there. Crazy bar scenario that I just, I only, have like, <laughs> I only have like seven bottles right now, but the other night or the other, uh, was it last week? I think it was Monday night. Ian texts me and he goes, "Hey, this liquor store right by where you work is gonna have uh, Blattens tomorrow. If you could get there." I'm like, "Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Check it out." I ended up walking out with three bottles. Just a uh, hundred and forty dollars later, <laughs> but I couldn't pass it up, man. It was three good bottles. Yeah, you did good. That was a no, good day. Like, it's a good, like good liquor, like expensive liquor. It's actually, it's definitely worth it. Like the, sure. it's so smooth and it's like, it's crisp and you get the cheap stuff and you're like, that's, that's why people don't like liquor, right? Like, it's like when you're taking shots and like mixing it with, you know, right, yeah. like Gatorade when we're in high school, like doing yeah. stupid stuff. It's oh, yeah. like, 
no one likes that liquor but like when you're actually drinking good stuff like my dad um my dad came down and um he's like a big scotch drinker um so i bought like a uh, i got like a johnny walker um blue mm-hmm. for him and i was drinking that and he's like he's like oh it's so good it's just so much better than like you know, your average stuff oh yeah and so yeah i'm, I'm, I'm kind of cycling through i actually went through a phase where i went from like um i went from like vodka and then i did because we had a bunch of this stuff left for my wedding actually a number of years ago and so i went from like a vodka phase to like a like a scotch phase now i'm on this bourbon phase uh, i think bourbon's probably probably the best i actually jack daniels i had like a i like jack honey for a while there too that was a pretty smooth smooth drink but yeah man this is it's good stuff bourbon's like I, I was the same way though i was like i was big on vodka for a while and uh and then i just transitioned over to bourbon and i love it man i don't drink i really i don't even really drink beer mm-hmm. at all uh anymore that's like bourbon man it's just it's so it's such a nice laid back drink nice laid back mm-hmm. buzz smooth buzz and everything with it too like if you have enough and it's but i'm telling you man like i was telling ian when you were getting your phone plugged in this blattens man i haven't had it in probably about a month or so but it is so good it is probably one of my top five for sure. Was it? What is it called? Maybe top top two. Uh, it's Blatten. Blatten. Okay. So, so it's, one of those, it's it's made by Buffalo Trace, and uh, you know, d- depending on who you ask, um, there's for whatever reason, like it's just really hard to find. It is. You know? It used to be. It used to be everywhere, man. But it now it's it used to be on the on the shelves, and you could buy as many as you want. Now you know you have to get a tip that certain liquor store got it in stock and you better be there. You know you know what I mean? Like it's crazy. And like, literally I had to sit outside. I had to wait for them to open last Tuesday. I was in line <laughs> and they had one box of it. Yeah. And, so uh, they get six bottles at a time and they're gone, you know, with they're gone, man. opening. I was the second um, person in line. So I got it. And, but like, uh, that's a, uh, so Ohio is a control liquor state. So the, the state controls the prices. Mm-hmm which is great because you're not getting price gouged, but it's just hard to find, you know? So you could go like Kentucky actually, where I think 95% of the world's bourbon is made, um, is an open state, which means retailers can sell for whatever they want. So that bottle of Blanton's is $58, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so that's what Ohio sells it for. If you go down to Kentucky where it's made, You'll pay 120 bucks, 160 bucks for that bottle. Yeah, it's insane. Interesting. It is. So it's really it good. Um, there's some people that say it's overhyped. You know, whatever you want to say, I think it's fantastic. And every time that I go back to it, I'm like, oh, if I could so just. If you look over it. Ian's shoulder there, you can see his pile of it there. It's uh, right up there in front of the cabinet. He's got his little collection. Yeah, there's a couple bottles back there. There's a few. And then is it behind you, too? Is there a few boxes behind you? Yeah. How many? Are those all unopened? Uh, yeah. Oh, amazing. Dude, I'm all pumped because I got one. Through this, you got, you've amassed quite the, stock, you, the, quite the stock of liquor there, dude. Yeah, I've, I've probably um, – so that's all bourbon that you see. Those oh, are wow. all different bourbons, uh, I think. Uh, I take that back. There's a couple scotches up there. Um, and I don't really like scotch, but I keep it for some family and friends that enjoy scotch. Um, no, I, uh, I always liked bourbon and it was one of those things though, that like I'd buy a bottle and it'd be gone in a couple days and you know, whatever. So I was never able to like have like a, a collection or not a collection, but I was never able to have like a stock. And when I <laughs> finished stock now. Basement, right. Uh, I finished my basement two, just over two and a half years ago, maybe something like that. And, uh, you know, I definitely wanted to build a bar. And so I went and I said, all right, I'm going to spend the money and I'm going to get like, I think I got bought nine bottles or 10 bottles, something like that. I'm like, this should be okay. And then like a couple of weeks later, I was down to like five bottles because I had like a couple parties or whatever. And so I was down to like five. I'm like, shit. And then I think really is when I went, took my trip down to Kentucky and that's when it got out of control it got out of control then uh, well you know you know what if you if you go back to the start of our podcast <laughs> and you see the the shelves behind him yeah uh when we first started it's 
a lot different now. Yeah, it's a lot different. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm out of room on my shelves and I, I just can't drink it fast enough now, but I still go and, you know, I don't buy nearly like I used to. You know, for a while there, I was buying at least one bottle, sometimes two and three bottles a week. Um, because I was trying to get this, you know, I wanted to, oh, I haven't had that. I got to have this. I got to, you know, and now I'm kind of at the point where I'm not buying anything unless it's, you know, so, I, can't, I can't normally get it or whatever. So, so yeah. we've, we've officially documented our time as dads for a year and you've, you've documented your addiction. It's correct. For officially for a year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know what yeah. we should do, Scott, is we should, like, have, um, we, should, we should have Scott go find a bottle of something that he's never had, and we should yeah. do a Zoom bourbon review with him. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll do that. I was thinking about awesome. that. Uh, you know, uh, Jeff, actually, our guest that we had on last week, um, was it last week or two weeks ago? Last week. It had it been last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he called me up midway through the week, and he was like, hey, man, you know, we, we drank some bourbon, you know, I was... And he's normally a scotch drinker. And he goes, uh, I'm at a liquor store right now. Can you tell me what to buy? And I'm like, sure. You know, so we're talking and everything. He's like, all right, well, what if I send you a sample of this? And then like for you and Steve, and then we could do a bourbon review while we're, you know, fa you know, zooming and everything. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. You know, whatever. Like I'm all about that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Know? That'd be awesome, man. Yeah. I'm down, man. I'm definitely all right. down. I'm we'll on it. I'm on a crazy rotation right now. Um, I've actually I've got a decent amount of time coming up, so you guys just let me know, and um, okay. I'm definitely down. It'd be yeah, a good time, I think. There's Perfect, actually a good man. amount of um, there's actually a good amount of breweries and um, and places out here too <laughs> to probably get involved with. Um, I don't know, just like you want to basically, uh, you guys will give me a, a like a bottle to go review, or just go find something basically. Yeah, I mean, we would have to see, um, you know, I don't know how Virginia is. Um, I used to know a couple, uh, at least the closer states, I used to know uh, whether or not they were open or closed. Open and closed states really just, it depends on, you know, we would never want like somebody to go spend a ton of money on something and then like, oh, not, like you know, I mean, so. Um, I, need it, I need it around the house anyway, so. <laughs> right, yeah, Let's exactly. Let's, Let's do true. it. Well, well, we'll look bad over there, man. We all we got goals now. We all got goals. Yeah, there you go. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, if there's something that you want to try or uh, if you want to, you know, maybe get into bourbon a little bit more, I can certainly give you some uh, some some good ones to get you get you started. Because um, it does. It happens quick, though. I mean, the one thing I would say with bourbon is you got to be prepared. It's probably any liquor. But if you really want to get into something, it, it becomes, um, you go very quickly from drinking, you know, your, your run of the mill, like Jim Beam or something like that, which I still love to this day, but I can tell very quickly whether it's that I'm drinking or if it's something like, like tonight I'm drinking a uh, Henry McKenna and like most people would never even know what this is, but it's freaking fantastic and it's like a $50 bottle and you know I think I, th I think a good starter too uh mm -hmm. to get into it is uh Basil Hayden's is really good for a, a starter to really get you into it it's, it's, it's quality it, so it's, it's pretty like decent your... price and it's probably yeah. it's easy to find too hmm. I'll have to I'll, yeah I'll have to try some of these how, well, you guys already said but how did you get involved and how did you guys get started in bourbon I got it because of Ian all right, so this is another military story. Um, so my one roommate, uh, so when I was, I was living in Japan, I was in Okinawa, and this kid, uh, you know, my, my previous roommate had PCS and he went back stateside or whatever. And so I had my own room for like, I don't know, three weeks or something like that. And it was amazing and everything else. And I was kind of your uh, Bud Light, Miller Light drinker and, you know, whatever. I think Actually, I was still probably... 20 maybe at the time so i was having to have well you were drinking when you were 20 <laughs> I, I would, no but i mean wow, seriously yeah. it's funny i used to have people go off for a while, dude, that's good yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but like on base i would have to have people go buy me booze like it's yeah. sucks, you know um but anyway so this dude actually from uh i can't remember where in ohio but 
probably like, I think it's actually BG area. Uh, I can't remember exactly the town, but so he comes in. And so right off the bat, like being from Ohio, like we, you know, we're cool and everything. He's like, well, I'm a, uh, I'm a Jack Daniels drinker. And I'm like, dude, I was never very good with Jack Daniels. Like I was kind of an asshole when I drank Jack, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, just get something different. You know, so I would grab Jim Beam. So I'd have Jim Beam white and he would get Jack Daniels, you know, number seven. And like on a Saturday night, if we weren't going out, we would stay inside, play video games, and we would each drink a bottle. Like oh, wow. it was in, and we would do this for two days in a row, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks straight. Like it was not healthy. It was awful. But like from there on, like I really, I stopped drinking vodka and I got hmm. back into vodka when I got out and then I had an incident that is on one of our episodes we don't really need to talk about. Uh, <laughs> Which incident was that? It was the uh, July 3rd incident with my dad. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So we did an episode with my dad that we went in through that whole thing. It was terrible. <laughs> um, but since then, I really haven't drank vodka. Yeah. Um, but no, man, I, I started liking bourbon. I like it a little bit sweeter, and, and it's, um, yeah, so, so I just. So I mean, bur bourbon and the original Call of Duty is how it started. Yeah, basically. basically. <laughs> well, actually, it was Halo. Uh, okay. <laughs> it, was, it was definitely Halo. Uh, but yeah, basically, yeah. Nice. So, nice. I have to tie this into being a dad. I think, um, so we've always had, we just, we've had so much, like, I've never been much of a liquor drinker. Um, and I, I just, I've been in school for so long. And I feel like, man, like, I look at my life for the last 10 years, and I'm like, I can't believe, I can't believe I'm 34 years old. Like, I can't, I can't believe, like, I have a kid. I'm 34 years old, like, where's my life gone? And it, so much of it we just spent, like, in the library and missing out on so much. And so it, this year was, like, a really good time to, like, just kind of, like, get back into, like, the real world and, like, have a life again. And so we started, like, going through, like, all this liquor we had amassed. Um, not It pales in comparison to what you've got behind you. But, um, you know, we had a couple bottles left from our wedding. And, like I said, I've got a different assortment of stuff. And it's, it's sad, but like I started drinking it at night so that I would sleep when my son was like not waking me up or whatever. So I'm like, you know, all of a sudden becoming an alcoholic. My, my, uh, <laughs> my, my program director is like, Hi, how's everything going with the kid? I'm like, oh, you know, like I'm drinking three or four drinks at night, poor bed. He's like, are you sure you're okay? I'm like, that's how you do it, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> he's a cool guy though. He, he understood. But yeah, I, I went through, like I said, went through a couple different things. And I think bourbon is, it's definitely got the smoothest aftertaste and it doesn't, it doesn't, maybe it's just the, whatever I'm drinking, but it doesn't, it doesn't have like that, um, like that kick at, at the end as much. It's, it's spicy. It's, it's good. It's, it's got a smooth aftertaste, but I feel like with Jack, you can get that like, Ooh, like I don't know if it's tart or yeah. I don't know if it's dry, but it's like, yeah. I, I yeah. tried to like it for a while, but well, he, here's the wonderful thing about uh, really any liquor, but like you figure out what you like and you yeah. roll with it, right? You know, I mean, there are so many options out there, and bourbon happens to be super popular, and and you know, um, I went down to the Kentucky bourbon trail and did some of that kind of stuff. And it's amazing to go through like the history of the, you know, like, like Buffalo trace, you know, where Blanton's is made like that distillery's been around since, uh, 1773. Oh, wow. So literally before the United States was a right. country, <laughs> like, right. they've been distilling, you know what I mean? So like you go there and you see all this history and you see all the people that, that were like the head of, you know, operations and, and what they, what they uh, contributed to the brand. And, and, you know, you look at Buffalo Trace and how uh, during prohibition, they were one of four, I think that's right. One of four American distilleries that were allowed to produce alcohol. Hmm. There was only like four that had a special license and they did it for medicinal purposes. And like, I don't know, just all these, I kind of like nerd out on, on some of this stuff. Cause it's, it's really, really cool. And like you go to the distillery and like, like you see these rooms where it really hasn't changed. Like, yes, now there's computers in them and stuff like that, that run these machines. But at the same time, you're looking at walls that there's markings on there from when, you know, the, the Kentucky river flooded and, you know, they can see where everything, you know, had to be taken out. It's really kind of cool stuff that 
uh, like I said, I definitely nerd out on that. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I, and then, and then really once you start um, like following the different distilleries and learning their stories and then seeing what they put out and now everyone's trying to innovate. And so now you're getting, you know, you know stuff finished in a, port wine cask and like mm. oh, what kind of flavors does that bring out and now you're getting you know this and that and there's all these different kind of innovations cleveland whiskey um around here i remember uh they came out with like the the cleveland whiskey and they, there was a big debate because could they really call it bourbon because they pressure age it um i think that's right i don't really know 100 percent for sure but you know they're allowed to be called bourbon and, and it's good stuff you know it's 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 great and they they make it in six months and so like from a technology standpoint i think that's amazing like they're doing something that you know takes people six or seven eight ten years they're doing it in six months and like right. business guy in me is like dude that's amazing how could you innovate that and you know i don't know yeah it's fun <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's man. definitely it's, it's, it's definitely interesting stuff there's um i always appreciate uh history in general they've, they've got this uh library here at the hospital um and it's actually the original naval hospital so going back to like uh probably around the same time we were referring to with like the bourbon but i, I think it was it was like 17 1760 1770 something but um there's a library in there now it's an old hospital but they actually have some of the old surgical rooms that you can actually go up and like look in and i'm just sitting there thinking i'm like man this is like where they're treating people and uh, you know, around the Civil War, and like it, you know, it's it's nuts, man. Like it's pretty amazing. Treat yeah, people for dysentery. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was thinking, yeah. like, you know, the way they used to treat people is kind of barbaric in this room. It'd be considered um, definitely medical malpractice. With right. That. right. <laughs> uh, no. but yeah, it's it's. Oh. A, I definitely appreciate. It. I, I I pick up what you're putting down, though. It's 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 always it, you have to you appreciate history, especially when you get older and you see time pass you by and you can reminisce and be like wow like i remember when yeah. i was playing the original call of duty and right. now they're on like you know call of duty 30 or whatever it's like there's oh, the, the original was always it's like romanticized too like the original was always better right you know? oh yeah dude i love That's the original sure. halo oh man uh system linking and just oh, oh yeah man. old school man it's old oh, yeah. school dude that's what's cool so for christmas we got my son uh the switch and uh, so I've been playing Mario with him and it's brought me back, man. Like now, oh. and so I bought uh, uh, Zelda for him and my wife's like, he can't you bought that for yourself. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, he'll be ready for it soon. So I'm sitting there right, playing right. everything. I'm like, oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. No doubt, man. I'm actually thinking, I've actually been uh, really toying with the idea of buying a game system. I have like the old, I have the last one I have is like the 360. Um, and I think I, I think I might've gotten a red eye at death the last time I checked, oh, yeah. but I'm due for uh, I'm due for an upgrade, but I don't know, man, I just, there's so much going on and getting ready to move and taking on this new job with the Marines. I'm, I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have. And the last thing I want to do is like get addicted on a game. Cause I know I will, like I have yeah. a very addictive personality. Oh, it's easy. And now I'm, now I'm going to be trying this new bourbon. I'm going to be, you know, Ian, when he was, you know, 25 years old, playing <laughs> the games and putting down, you know, handles of, of bourbon. <laughs> Free two Marines. I can drink. Five, it'll be good. <laughs> yeah, don't, be careful drinking with those Marines, man, because they're, yeah. uh, they're a different breed. No, I've heard. They, uh, so I got, I got put in contact with the, uh, the battalion leader uh, or the commander of the battalion, and um, I, I forget the other guy's rank and where, and where he sits in the whole scheme, but – my my advice was like this guy is a great guy i would advise do not take liberty with him um so i was like okay this sounds like it could be a good time yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it i really am i don't know how much trouble you can get into in lejeune but i've heard i've heard good stories so like a lot of my um a lot of my program like my program director my assistant program director a lot of these guys were like former military and so they have like a ton of like raw like raw experience military experience and like such great stories and they're saying like uh the my 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 assistant program director he's probably the reason that i'm here um just because i i really bonded well with him and um that's why i chose to come here but anyway um he was telling me when he was down there with the marines he was saying he's like you know this young kids come up to me like hey doc so like i guess they've got this like 
this, they've got this scorpion in North Carolina that's like not anywhere else in the world. I could be wrong, but um, or maybe maybe it's wherever they were stationed. But um, they've got this scorpion, this like camel spider. And these kids were trying to, they were asking about like the anti-venom for the scorpion. And they're like, you know, can we get this anti-venom? And he's like, how the hell do you know what anti-venom is? And he's like, and why do you want to know if we have it? And he's like, well, so we're, you know, we've got this scorpion and, and we captured this camel spider and we're having like, you know, basically, uh, you know, battle to the death of these two things. And they're like, if we get stung, we need, you know, we need these, uh, the anti-venom. I'm like, I can only imagine, like you give a bunch of gung-ho, like Marines, young kids, a bunch of free time. And yeah. You can only imagine like the dumb things they do, dude. I, 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 I've watched the videos of the, those scorpions uh, versus the, the camel spiders. It's pretty insane. Those camel spiders, man. Those things are. Uh, are they really? Dude, they're, they're nasty, insane. man. Oh. They look like something out of the aliens movies. Dude, so so camel spiders. You know, they're in the Middle East, and um, I had a couple different run-ins with camel spiders. And so, like, you look them up, and they say, like, the body's the size of a dinner plate. You know, they're not that big. Yeah. They're, like... They're big, though. They're big. And then their legs are freaking long and, you know, whatever. Um, the only time I was really freaked out, I mean, I was very fortunate. You know, my time, I did, uh, you know, almost two full years in Iraq and stuff like that. And, like, during when we took Fallujah and everything, I was very, very fortunate to be attached to units that weren't necessarily on the front lines. Uh, I was with the reconnaissance unit. And so we had a very specific mission, but um, we did like, we had to clear some houses and stuff like that. And there was this one time I'll never, I, I like, I get messed up just even thinking about it. Like the house was clear and I was all jacked up because they're like, dude, there's a, this is back when, so remember this is 2004. And so at the time, we were still looking for, you know, WMDs uh, in Iraq, you know, and so I'm over there, I'm this like NBC nerd that, you know, the recon guys really don't enjoy being around that much. Like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, you're such a waste, blah, blah, you know. Um, but so we're clearing this house and like, there's supposedly some 55 gallon drums that have some liquid in it that I need to go test. I'm like, fuck yeah, I get to do my job. You know, so we go over there and it's nothing but freaking like pond water. Like it's, it's literally water that they were saving for, you know, to have drinking water, you know, they were going to yeah. filter somehow, or I don't know what the hell they were going to do with it. So it's nothing or whatever, but we have to clear this house and they're like, Hey, you know, go ahead and, and do that room or whatever. I'm like, fuck yeah. You know, I'm real Marine, you know? And so I'm, I'm clearing my room and everything and I'm looking and I'm nervous as shit and, um, so there's nothing in this room, but there's like, like, well, you got to check the cabinets and everything, make sure we don't find any contraband and everything. So it's like a kitchen. And so I'm checking the cabinets. I don't see anything. And there's a freezer and it's like a, a, a chest freezer. So like it opens from the top and I open this freezer, dude. And there's like four of these freaking camel spiders in there. Oh my God. I wanted to so bad. I did not, but I wanted to shoot <laughs> these fuckers so bad. Like it was, <laughs> terrifying like they weren't they were down far enough that they couldn't really get out so it wasn't like but like i saw it and like instantly my skin's crawling i'm like oh you know <laughs> like what and so like of course the other guys that have been around them for so long and everything were like knocking the freezer over and letting them out and like you know just, oh sounds terrible, uh, yeah sounds terrible. no thank you i'm all set man yeah no that sounds sounds horrible we have uh we have these patients that come in the er we had one yesterday dude it was it, it was the most it was the most horrifying thing I've ever seen in my entire life. So we get this patient that's brought in and we're told like, Hey, like there's probable um, bed bugs, uh, bed bug infestation. So like everyone gowns up or whatever that goes into the room and I shit you not. Um, like I always send the nurses in like uh, me talking, like how I always treat the nurses. Well, I'm like, go in there and tell me like what you see. Like <laughs> I'm not fucking going in there. So I'm sitting at the door and the nurse like pulls off the, pulls off the sheet of like this, this patient. And she's like, ooh, and she like runs to the door. I'm like, oh, fuck, what is it? And she's like, go look. I can't even believe what I just saw. Go look. And I walk, we, I walk up there and I like lift up the sheet and I shit you not. There's like a mound of bed bugs on this oh. lady, in this be lady's belly button. And then there's beetles. 
there's like beetles crawling around her. Just, not only she had bed bugs, but she had beetles, bro. She had beetles. Oh. I'm thinking like, is there a turf war going on here? Like, <laughs> is it the beetles ter- territory or is it the, is it the bed bugs territory? Like, what? Who's what a this? nightmare. Oh, oh my God. It was awful. It was absolutely Ooh. awful. So anyway. We well, had a- it should just think about that. I know, man. Yeah, dude, it was bad. Ugh. So we, we, we shut down this, we shut down this room for the day. Uh, and, and like uh, it was supposed to get fixed yesterday. That by the end of the day, I go back today, and it was still at like the 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 um whatever like the pesticide guys coming in at like six o'clock at night to go like blast this room. Oh, it was terrible. It was oh absolutely- God. Yeah. No, thank you, man. I hate yeah. bugs, man. It's. Ugh. Yeah, not for me. No, no, no like- <laughs> not my thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm just like. It's like the creepy crawlies. Ooh. Yeah, man. Oh man. That's like me after I watched that movie, uh, Arachnophobia. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that yeah, movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, man. After you watch that, you go to bed that at night and you feel like something like oh, you string on your it. shorts, like tickle your leg and like, oh. Yep. No, no thanks. It's, it's definitely. It yeah. gives you it's just like anything that you feel touching your leg, you're just like, ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah ooh. It's a bug. It's a bug. Right, hey, hey uh, Scotty, we, we do a couple of different things on this show. Um, the first thing is kind of like a little challenge, but we do, uh, it's called a proud dad moment. All right. So uh, what we like to do is make sure that everyone that we talk to takes a second to think about something that they're super proud of. And it can be a couple different things, but typically it's either something you're really proud of your kid for, mm-hmm. or what I like to see personally is something you're proud of yourself for. Uh, I think as men and as dads, we we don't always take the time to reflect on something that, especially is related to a father, like can be proud of. You know what I mean? And 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 some of us are better than than others of of kind of recognizing and being aware of what we've done. Um, but I think it's super important because if you if you if you understand what you did, then you replicate that behavior and, and that can make us be better fathers. Um, sure. So proud dad moment is, you know, one of my favorite pieces that we do on this show. Uh, so anything that comes to mind, uh, you got a four month old, so. Um, yeah. He, he's, he's not blowing my socks off quite yet, but <laughs> um, no, I think, um, you know, I'll, I'll, like a little thing. Um, he actually, uh, he hated tummy time. He hated tummy time, dude. Like this, this, this guy would he would he freaked out for like the first three and a half months. And we put him in. He got physical therapy because um, he had a little bit of torticollis because he was breached and his head was kind of compressed the wrong way and whatnot. Um, and so uh, I was super proud of him because the one day, so like he actually got me hooked on this song. Have you ever, you guys ever seen the Gummy Bear song? Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, so like, the, 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 I'm like I'm like rocking this song in my car when I'm when I'm like driving, but that's normal. I'm proud of him for that. But but like, uh, so we do the physical therapy, and like you know he barely could hold his head up, and you know we were worried he was kind of his his head was kind of like when he was just sitting regularly is kind of like offset. Um, and then the other day, uh, you know he finally like did tummy time for like two minutes and held his head up, and then I swear to God like. A week later, I, I walk in and my my wife's got this gummy bear song and he's just like head up, just like falling around the room. I'm like, oh, man. I'm like, there you go. No, oh, yeah. like, I was just like super proud of him because I could tell he really did not like uh, being on his belly and like was super uncomfortable about it. And like within a week, he went from like really not being able to do much of it to doing it reasonable. And then all of a sudden he's like watching music videos just like on his belly. I'm yeah. like, there you go, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. That's awesome. Well, kudos to you and your wife for sticking with it because tummy time is super freaking important. And oh, yeah. very easy to, well, this, you know, he doesn't like this, so we're not going to do it. And uh, developmentally, super, super important. So Absolutely. kudos to you guys for, for, uh, for sticking with it. Because then, yes. then they learn. And, and like you said, you had that moment where, he was into it, you know, and so then it'll become easier from there. Yeah, right, exactly. Preparing for it. Maybe uh, you guys talk about like, you know, sharing tricks and whatever. Um, one of the things I was doing with him is I noticed that it wasn't so much that he didn't like being on his belly. He just didn't like that he couldn't hold his head up and his face was getting stuck in the in the blanket yeah. or whatever. So what I started doing with him is like laying him on my forearm and just like having his head hang off my my fingertips. 
so that, like, strength. When I was standing up, he would have to look at the TV and he would hold his head up. And if he couldn't hold his head up all the way, he was like, it was down, but he wasn't like waking out because like he was like, I'm standing up and he's just like looking at the ground, you know, his not face isn't buried in the, the yeah. Plate. So that was, I, 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 um, I don't know. I think one day I was just like, I was whole, I was sitting with him. He was getting fussy and I stood up and I'm like, you know, changing arms. And like, of course you want to like watch Paw Patrol, which is the ship by the way. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> um, Great. We're we're sitting there watching Paw Patrol. Like I can't figure out how to hold this kid any other way because like I'm getting shaky in both arms and I just like flip him on his belly. I'm like, oh wow, this is like tummy time. We're watching we're watching TV and he's getting tummy oh, yeah. time. So, quick that's tidbit awesome. for anyone else who's wondering about that. that well, Scott, that's what we like to call a dad hack right there. <laughs> okay. Dad hack. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Because that was I miss the next our, question. Our buttons, man. Yeah, we don't have our buttons. We don't have our yeah. Hmm. But yeah, it's a dad hack, my friend. That's yeah, awesome. That's you answered that's, both. That's a good one though. I mean. Uh, I, you're working on the strength for his neck and everything too. That so, neck I mean, strength, is, that head strength is so important. Um, yeah. That's what she said. You know, yeah. age, you know. <laughs> even if it's just for a second. Right. No. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's awesome, man. Well, I was gonna say we were gonna ask him about the dad hack, but he covered it. So yeah, he got his dad hack in. So that's fantastic, uh, Scotty. I'd be remiss if I failed to mention the great and powerful Kathy Zeller. Um, we all. I, she's <laughs> such an amazing soul. Um, you know, being in early childhood, uh, I had the uh, wonderful pleasure of sitting on the Lake County Ch Ch Family and Children's First Board with her. And then um, I work with her constantly. I mean, even, even now that she's retired, still uh, going above and beyond to help out uh, especially a lot of my employees that go to her uh, for some training and things like that. So um, she has made such an impact on me um, and I can, you know, she's so proud of you and, and everything that you've done. And she always likes to talk about it. And, and I really miss Kathy. I haven't seen her now. I mean, especially with all this quarantine stuff, I used to look forward to like the once a quarter meetings that I go to, I at least get to see her and I haven't seen her in a while. So yeah, she's, she's she's doing, doing well. well. No, she she's doing well. She um, she's she's she really is an amazing. Uh, she's just an amazing human being. Um, obviously everyone everyone loves their mom. We're all biased. We all have the best mom. Um, but like uh, yeah, I mean she's she's done wonders for me. I, I mean I don't know if you guys know, but I was actually adopted. Um, I was actually adopted by them. Uh, when okay. I was when I was much older. Um, I was like you know. I was 15 years old um and there's a, there's a long backstory there but uh like Kathy and Rex they're I mean mom and dad to me they always will be but they're I mean they're actually you know not not my parents at all and but you know because of the people that they are you know, they could take a complete stranger and bring them into their home and make them family yeah. um and I think what you're describing is like I think what everyone sees in, in my mom um you know she's just got a heart of gold and she loves to help other people and loves, you know, early childhood and she'll tell you all about her master's degree. Uh, <laughs> if the I mean, first she, thing you out of her mouth when you meet her is her master's degree. You're not surprised. Yep. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, man, like if, if somebody, if, if you're a kid that is going to get adopted for, for whatever reason, and to be fair, I don't know your whole backstory, but I do know that if you're a teenager and you're, you need to get adopted by somebody, that is who you want to get adopted. No, that's exactly. I, I can, I can, I can definitely freaking amazing. Um, confirm that. Yeah, she is amazing. Like I can, you know, I can't even tell half of the stuff that she does for me and my business because, like, she's not allowed to do things, but she she gets stuff done, and uh, she make you know bends rules and where where she can. You know, it's just, she's such a good person. Um, so I just had to get that out there because yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna get any arguments from me there, my friend. Right, <laughs> right, right. He's uh, she's special. She, we we actually call her uh, so we call her Wombat. Uh, my wife and I. Um, so being being my mom, you know, and I'm a young kid, and always like to try to get under her skin and you know mess around with her. Um, you know, it used to make her mad when I called her. Uh, like, so I think something on TV was like. Um, you know, some someone called her, someone called their their mom or their wife woman or something like that. She's like, oh, that just makes me sick when men speak to women like that. And so, 
I'm sitting there, I'm like, I start calling her woman, you know, just to like get under her skin. And she's like, you better stop calling me that. And so then of course I find some other nickname she doesn't like. And I start <laughs> calling her, I, I can start calling her old bat. Um, so, so then it went from woman to woman bat to old bat. And then like my mom is notoriously like very blonde, very blonde, not nothing against blonde, but you know, the stereotype, like she's very airheaded at times. Um, mm -hmm. Sweetest woman you'll ever meet. But so we call her wombat because whenever she does anything like silly or like funny, we're just like, oh, that's, that's wombat. So <laughs> next time, you, next time you see her, Ian, you can call her. I tell will. Her, tell her I told you, I told you about wombat and she'll, she'll just light up because I think she knows she she's embraced the fact that we call her Wombat because she's silly and like she yeah. you know, does silly things. Um, but she she loves it. So now she's she's Grandma Wombie to Cole. So number one, next time I see her, I'm definitely going to refer to her as Wombat. And She'll number two, I think that I just found the title for this episode. There you go. We wrong. always got to find it somewhere in the episode. <laughs> so your, your wonderful mother will have uh, a, a Talking Dads episode named after her. There you sure. go. She'll love it. She'll love it. <laughs> you're gonna make you're gonna make her year. You don't That's understand. Fantastic. You're gonna no, make I mean, her she, year. she really is great. She's done so much for me. I can never repay. You know. So um, I'm very happy for you that that you got to, you know, be her son and you know that's super yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, I wouldn't be where I am without them. So, right. for everyone listening, that's a that's a, a only a small way to attest for everything that she she's willing to do for people. Yeah, so. hundred percent. That's awesome. All right, dude. Well, uh, we're on uh, just about two hours here. Um, anything else that you wanted to talk about? Plug? Um, you know, you guys gotta you guys gotta get me caught up on Cleveland sports real quick. Oh yeah, let's do that. Well, shit, there is no sports. Well, um, we have the draft. The draft, right? What do you guys think about the like, draft? Well, I mean, I'm pretty pumped about it. I mean, it's usually our uh, our Super Bowl, right? So, so I mean, we're the uh, we're the uh, LSU up north now. That's all yeah, we, we got are. LSU players. We are yeah, LSU guys, which isn't a bad thing. No, not it's at not. all, man. It's not That's at a all. phenomenal team. So yeah, I, I mean. What is the name? Wilkes? Yeah. Uh, Steve Wilkes, the coach? No, the, the, uh, no, the, 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 the lineman that we took yesterday. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, the guy from Alabama. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. Alabama. So, yeah. yeah that, like, that's big. I think, cool. I think uh, that's big, dude. I, I, didn't, I didn't get to watch a whole lot of the games. That's why I kind of put, put it out there. Let's, you know, let's chat about some Cleveland sports because you guys listen to 92.3 The Fan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dude, I miss it. I miss it so you much. Like, you have no it? idea how much I, I just like love all the little quirky things about that show, um, like the bull and the fox, and like. All oh, yeah. you still listen to it, man? Get the, get the radio dot com. No, I know, but I just don't have the like. I'm not in my car enough because I live yeah, like that's, yeah, if you're four blocks from the hospital. And it's like I, yeah. I walk a lot, and um, I just don't really listen to the radio. But I, do I miss it so much? And like, all I, I used to be so in tune with like everything going on with Cleveland sports. And now it's like anytime I get the chance, like look up, like what are they, what are the Browns doing, the Indians doing? That's one thing about being away from home. Um, you know, like obviously there's there's wonderful parts of the world outside of Menor, Ohio, and Cleveland, Ohio, but um, it's uh, they'll always hold a special place. And like, you know, I could be like going through my day and having like a very mediocre, like not exciting day, and like hear something about Cleveland, I'll just like perk up. Um, yeah. Hundred percent. So, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we have some things to to brag about now in the future. Because of course, everyone wants to talk to you about like LeBron, and it's like I'm yeah. sorry, but like yeah. So yeah, I think I think dude, I think the Browns are gonna. I think they kind of got it turned around. Like, I thought last year was kind of like a kind of like an experiment. You throw a bunch of players together without any chemistry, and there's a lot of talent. And it seems like the head coach was um, you know, kind of out of his. It was out of his league, but um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think I don't know. I, I'm not sure about the head coach. What is it? Stan Stansky? Stefanski. Stefanski. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. It doesn't sound like he has a, any head coaching experience, but um, I don't know. What do you guys? Head coaching about? experience, but I know the ladies really like him. Oh, and that's a. That um, we have a lot of smart guys in the room. That's for sure. Like with these, with our. Uh, the yeah, we got a lot of Harvard front office and everything. Okay, we got but Harvard dudes now. Yeah, we'll see how that translates to the field. But yeah, I mean, right? I mean. Yeah, I, you know, here's, here's what I'll say about last year is everybody had extreme 
extremely high expectations, and I did as well. But I, I was like, oh, we're going to win the Super Bowl, this and that. I'm like, I will be happy if we just make the playoffs, right? Last year was such a disappointment. I think Dude, Baker I was had a bet last year, and I thought I was getting a steal at saying that, that the over-under for wins was nine. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll take over nine. I thought that was Dude. a steal. No, everybody, right. I mean, for sure. But I think everyone did. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It was the most disappointing season, man. It, it, it sucked. It was just uh, – it was a shit show. But uh, I don't know. I feel like they're putting the right guys in the right places here. We got a lot of – we need that offensive line, right? So we're going to see how that goes. We got Yeah, so we picked up another line today. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some depth there. And then uh, I, I guess the safety that we got today is supposedly the number yeah, one rated it, safety right? in the draft. Delta, yeah, man. That kid's, yeah, Delta. Yeah. That, yeah, so, I mean, so who's our uh, safeties now? We have, I mean, we still have. Well, I think we got rid of Randall. I think Randall left. Yeah. That was, so, okay. um, so who do we have? I, uh, who's the other guy? Um, I can't think I of who we have. Now. Who's the dude from, uh, oh, man. I'm so far out of sports now. Cause, like, usually I'm listening to sports talk, and I stop listening to it because it's, they have know. nothing to talk about. Right. So I feel I like I should be in baseball mode right now. Like this is the time of year that I'm fully invested into baseball. And then like September hits, you know, I don't know, I guess like July hits. And then I'm like, all right, football's getting ready to start. Got to do like a fantasy draft coming up. I got to learn everything over again, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, this whole, this whole quarantine thing has thrown me off with sports. Cause you see the, the NBA opened up practice facilities. Did oh, they really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, today they they're they're set, or they have a plan now to to open up practice facilities, which is just a step in the direction, right? Like it makes yeah. you wonder if they're going to try and get it playoffs in. No, I I think they are, and do, I I think Georgia, the governor of Georgia, opened up uh, the state, you know, all the salons and gyms, and I yeah. mean that's going to be the first, you know, the first, you know, yeah. the first experiment to see how things go. I mean, honestly, I think. What's going to end up happening is I, I think we're getting to the point where our economy can't really sustain, um, you know, this quarantine uh, too much longer without having, like, really long-term uh, repercussions. I'm not an expert yeah. in, like, economics or anything like that, but just look around and, like, you know, people can't work, man. And, like, you know, they just signed a $484 billion stimulus package for hospitals and small or for small businesses. And, dude, like, I mean, how, how many times can you – can you, can you throw that much cash into the, you know, into the economy without – We've already done it too much. Inflating. Yeah. And it's like – so, yeah, I, I think it, I think we're, we're going to get to the point now where it's like towards the end of spring, like summer, I think you're going to start seeing people slowly, like, you know, getting back to normal. Things are going to start opening up. It's just going to be slow. And, unfortunately, I think what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of these um, – like, the, so when, when this all happened the first time, the Spanish flu is like a very similar – um story to what we're dealing with um they actually had like a rebound um like the actual second wave of virus uh caused de deaths was was actually higher than the first so i think mm -hmm. we're gonna kind of see something like that where people get out of quarantine and you know you have all of these asymptomatic carriers and then obviously just get, everyone gets you know back together no you know no concern for like hygiene no concern for like masks and you're gonna see a lot of people getting sick again but I think it's it's just kind of time, unfortunately. Like you just can't you can't prevent against it forever. There's just nothing you can do, man. Like you just have to hope for the best. And I think the idea behind flattening the curve isn't to prevent, you know, deaths. It's to prevent, you know, the amount of people getting sick all at once. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's the really hospitals from being overwhelmed. It's to, right? Yeah, to prepare yeah, exactly. and to have the equipment, to have people, all the PPE and right. everything. People are so going to get it's, sick. It's buying time. If we can spread out people getting sick, then it's better for everyone. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, I mean, I, I think it's. I think we're gonna get to the point now where people are gonna start coming out and they're gonna start opening things up, and and people are gonna get sick, but I don't think you're gonna hear about it as much. Like right. you're gonna, well, there's secretly gonna be a lot more people getting sick and dying than you currently have, but we're just not gonna hear about it because people are gonna be over it. You know, the media is gonna talk about it, but it's gonna be old news and mixed in with True. fake news, and you never you never know anymore. <laughs> right. Um, uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, so my, my grandpa is at a nursing home, and he's – the place where he's at has 30 cases, all right? He's one of the people that has it, and he's fine. He's doing fine. 
they have out of the 30 cases in a nursing home, you know, you figure all these people, they're screwed, they're all done, right? Mm-hmm. One death out of the 30 people that have it. Had and it. What, yeah. So, and that's what I was going to say. And it's not to diminish anybody. I mean, there's been real loss of life, which is. Absolutely, awful. man. This, I mean, everybody yeah. reacts differently. So, But I mean, the reality is, is after six weeks now that we're going on this is, I feel like the fear is gone. It is. You know, well, you when it, it first started, everyone was terrified. I mean, I, so, so my business has been shut down for six weeks now. You know, the daycares yeah. have been closed, but I've been going in there every day pretty much by myself or with one other guy, and we've been doing a lot of remodels and stuff like that. And six weeks ago, dude, you could drive – 150 miles an hour down route 20 if you wanted to and you would be fine there was Mm -hmm. nobody and like today it took me so long to get to the freaking uh, my my normal time 20 minute drive six weeks ago would take me 10 minutes it took me like 30 minutes to get there today (laughs) like where are these people going i I, I was on my way to work yesterday you know because i'm doing my half days and i uh Lowe's was oh, absolutely yeah. there was not a parking spot available dude the Lowe's traffic was terrible had been packed the whole time because the sun comes out and everybody's like okay I gotta get my yard work done I mean shit even the grocery right. stores just the roads were packed yesterday so people yeah. are starting to get a little more laxed on everything and they're trying to they but I think everybody's gonna get like you said they're gonna get really um I don't know they're kind of gonna get away from the whole hygiene thing and worrying about wearing a mask and things like that so you will see a lot of people getting a little too laid back with it uh i mean at this point now i mean i will go into a store and i'll put one of the masks on it i mean it's just and obviously the masks that we have they're not for my protection right it's it's the it's for everyone um, it's for everybody Mm -hmm. else so if i don't wear one when i'm at a store now i feel like a a dick yeah the other day it was nice out and i was i i've had my uh i've had a mask and then i have a bandana and uh it was in my jacket that i've been wearing you know it was super nice out the other day and i go walking into the store and i don't have my jacket on me i'm like ah. <laughs> i'm like but i really yeah. needed to get this thing so i just went in and like i got a couple looks but i was like i'm sorry guys like yeah yeah you do yeah like, take my sock off or something if that's gonna make Watch me- <laughs> <laughs> right. after you're doing your manual labor man i don't think you want to take your sock off yeah, that's face. True. yeah. <laughs> they, they might rather have just the open mouth Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it's, um, I think it's, it's, it's a good thing. And I hope, it, I hope people are still responsible, you know? Um, yeah. Like I know for us, we're, we're getting ready to open up as a pandemic center um, because that's the only way we're allowed to open. And so the rules are super, super uh, tight and, you know, it's not necessarily profitable, but I'm looking as it, looking at it as a way to, kind of bridge the gap between what we've been doing and what normal operations are. And so, you know, we're just doing the best we can. And, and I know everyone's, I'm just so ready to get back to a normal, you know, know. and it's not going to be normal, right? Like, I don't think we're going to be like Japan is where, you know, Japanese culture, people wear masks all the time when they go out. Right. You know, they're just, what they're used to we're not used to that you know i think it's going to take a while but um i think some some things are going to change you know and it's probably sure. for the better i don't know we'll yeah I, mean, things go. I just i feel like uh i feel like this country is very big on hysteria and so like once once things like what especially the media like once the once the media is done and they found something else to harp on and talk about things just get pushed to the wayside. And I honestly, I really do think like in, in three months, like you're, no one's going to really be talking about it. Uh, unfortunately. Be, yeah. I, 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 really I agree think. with you. But you know, I thought that like with the elections and things like that, like I thought that that was really what was going to take over and like, Oh, we're not, we're not talking about COVID anymore because, uh, but like all the primaries being canceled and everything else, you know, are not, canceled, yeah. but you know, yeah, no, but I, I, I agree with you. But I think what you know, once we start opening stuff up, man, I think it's yeah. gonna be easy for people to forget about it, right? Like, like we're talking about right now, right? Like once once Browns training camp opens, mm-hmm. or you know the Indians go back to spring practice, like who's gonna think about COVID? You know, like it's gonna be a 
you know, some of the past. I mean, right. yeah. well, I mean for me, really, honestly, like, yeah, a really good example would be this podcast, you know, so this is what week six, I think that we've done zoom podcasts. Yeah. And the last five weeks, like it has been COVID talk, you know, well, even so, even last week was like a lot less of COVID. It was talk. a lot less last week, but like, he, I, I feel like as you went week to week, I think it was yeah. less and less as we went on. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, like here we're two hours in, and we we this is when we start talking about it, you know. Yeah, uh, right. which I think is good, right? Like I think that we're all ready to move on. We're mm-hmm. all ready to okay. If the inconvenience of wearing a mask when I'm at the grocery store, and you know keeping extra hand sanitizer in my car. If that's what I have to deal with, happy to do it. Yeah. And, and honestly, like it really wouldn't be an issue if everyone was responsible, right? If, if everyone right, just true. washed their hands, wore a mask and w- were generally just like clean, which it's, it's not, it's not hard to be dirty in a sense of like spreading a virus. Cause it really isn't like you can sneeze and not realize right. and, you know, in, in, you know, contaminate everything around you. But, um, you know, it, or like, you know, sneeze in your, sneeze in your hand and touch the doorknob. But, mm-hmm. you know, if ever, if everyone just kind of goes back to their normal life, um, but, but then just keeps in mind, like, Hey, like, you know, this is still serious. Let me just continue to wear a mask. Let me just continue to wash my hands after, you know, every time I touch something or eat, or I, you, I think you'll see a big difference But the problem is you just can't rely on everyone to do that. It's just, right. no, you can't. And that's what you have to worry about is other people. Exactly. And I think, yeah. like you said, with the media and everything, and then like social media, for example, like, if it's not the number one thing that's on what people are seeing every day, and a lot of people get most of their information from social media. So if that's not what they're seeing all the time, then it's going it's to fall to the wayside. So they're going to be back to their normal shit. They're not going to yeah. be worried about it. And those are the type of people that are going to be like, oh, I don't have to wash my hands as much. Or just, yeah. they're going to forget about it. They're not going to take care of things the way they should. And that's, when, that's the problem you're going to have. Yeah. It's not people that are still conscious of it that I'm going to still wash my hands the same amount I do and try to make sure my kids are clean and you know but it's other people that just like oh yeah. fuck it it's not even I'm bored with this it's not even important anymore right so that, I think you're already you're already seeing it. I think people are starting to resent like this quarantine it's affecting their lives and I understand I, I completely get For it sure. right? like people are they have not able to work having financial difficulty like they're resenting the idea of quarantine and so what do you do like I mean we're all immature uh, to a certain extent like when you resent something, you rebel, you do the opposite, right? Like, so these people are going to like throw it to the wind and be like, oh, forget it. You know, I already saw, I've been seeing my posts on social media, you know, the little time that I get to go on, um, you know, people are like, I'm not wearing a mask. You can't tell me what to do. It's like, already? Like, and we're still yeah. like. Yeah, this is, this is still yeah, pretty like, fresh right now. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 it's going to be quick, man. But people are looking for reasons to not think about it. And people are angry about it. And given the first chance to throw to the wind, I think that's exactly what people are going to do. And you're just going to see, unfortunately, a huge wave that comes in that no one really talks about, unfortunately, but yeah, yeah it's, it's true. tough, man. Like I, I've been saying throughout this whole thing is I would not want to be in charge. You know, I wouldn't want to yeah, be no, I'm not making these calls. Certainly wouldn't want to be president. Like, because I mean, here's the thing. there's going to come, uh, I heard this on Rogan the other day. There's going to be a point in time where we have to, to weigh the um, the cases or the 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 tragic deaths caused from COVID nineteen versus the uh, mental health issues from being quarantined and yeah. the people that I mean that's crazy to think about. Well, yeah, people with depression and things like There's that. So you have financial problems. The depression yeah. and everything gets so high that we're better off taking our chances with a disease or with a virus like COVID-19. Right. Like no, that's true. insane to me. Like how can you possibly make that decision? Yeah, no, it's tough. It really is. Um, and I think it's, it's so true. Like I'm, I'm fortunate, you know, my, my family is um, fortunate. We're both working um, and still it's hard for us. Like um, I, I never really realized how much just being able to go to the gym made a difference in my life like yeah you know coming home from work and like even even with having coal now i'm still limited on my time but like you know coming home and going for a quick a quick run or you know i bought like a pull-up bar or like you know just going to the gym for you know the pool on base 
Yeah. It's like, even if it's just like 30 minutes, that just the idea of being able to like go in and decompress and work out, it's huge. And not, sure. um, you know, I should say it, it's, it's huge. It's um, huge. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's, it's big. It really is. And so when you can't do that, it's, it's easy to get down on yourself. Like I, I've been more tired than I usually am. And I, maybe that's because of cold, but I just feel like maybe I'm just a little, little like a tad, not depressed, but like just down, you know, like it's, we're in, it's just so we're in all in kind of a funk. Um, Dude, we can't just, watch sports. Right, exactly. Which you would think as a Browns fan might make you less depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, opening day for the Tribe this year, It what was it, Steve? 67. Almost 70 degrees. Sunny. Like, we were pissed off when the, when, the, when the Major League Baseball put out their schedule. They're like, March 26th or 25th, whatever it was. They're like, that's when the Tribe home opener is going to be. We're like, are you? freaking kidding me there's right. snow it. opener in march like there's guaranteed to be snow and then what do you know it's yep. like 70 degrees and sunny i know oh this would have been an amazing opening day yeah i think i think opening day is like it's the best of of all like even with the browns like the first game of the year like the Cavs I and mean, the Cavs have, you have that hope. Years, like dude there's nothing better than like opening day for the tribe i don't like going down and like drinking oh, and oh dude it's amazing it's That's really the best, man. Do it every year. Yeah, every yeah. year. That's good stuff. I uh, I definitely miss it, man. It's uh, you guys have to enjoy it because I, I couldn't wait to get out um when I was when I was home and like I I picked a med school that was further away to like to get out um but man like I haven't been back and I haven't been back in a couple years now I haven't been home in a year but I haven't been able to like go out and experience Cleveland in a couple years and. The one time that I did go back, like the flats are all redone, and like, yeah. oh, and then the calves were good for a while, and I'm like already moved away, and I'm like, what is going on? Like, <laughs> I hear all I'm here all these years, and the Browns are garbage, and the Indians had their ups and downs, whatever, and the calves are garbage, and I and like you know the city itself was great, you know I always left Cleveland, but there wasn't a lot going on there, and then I moved away, and it's like everything is it's just so much better, and I'm like, man, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sucks. Yeah, no, they've done such a good job, uh, especially with the flats area. Like, it's oh, it's so awesome, man. Well, I haven't been there in a while now, but you know, um, yeah, they've done a really good job, and and it's it's a lot of fun. You should you should visit more often. Um, I plan on it, man. We're my team and I think we're uh, we're gonna come home this summer because you know, Cole, we're, we're not gonna travel. Uh, we want to take him on a plane. Even this summer, when we come home, we're we're just gonna drive. I think, oh, but. Yeah. Um, we're going to come home, I think, because my, my parents haven't been able to come down. And, right. um, you know, I don't want – I would rather I would rather go to them right? Um, rather yeah. than have them come to us. Just they're older and, you know, sure. you know, Wombat, who knows what her immune system is these days. <laughs> Wombat. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, so we're, we're going to come home. But I'm, I'm looking forward to it because we PCS on, on July 1st, so I have a couple days. Um, and then once we get moved in, I think we're going to, we're going to head back home and just like spend a week at home. Nice, um, yeah. I'm really looking forward to it, man. Hell yeah. Hopefully by then, uh, the, everyone is very responsible and we are still able to have, uh, bars and restaurants open. If you come home, yeah. let us know. We would love to have a drink in person and, uh, yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah, out. man. That'd be great. Yeah, I appreciate you. This is this has been a blast, man. I, I it's good to catch up with you guys, and yeah. I think we what you guys are doing is awesome, man. This is it's kind of transcendent, dude. This is like like I said, it's like it just makes me realize, you know, like we're all getting older, man. Like this is you know, yeah, yeah. this is us all talking about our lives in the next phase of our lives, you know, like yeah. you know what's like to be a dad. It's like I can't believe I'm talking about this, but yeah. here we it's are. It's weird, man. You it's know? real sometimes. We're the adults now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. scary sometimes too. Yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> That's insane. Doubt. Well, dude, thank you so much for for hanging out with us. Um, yeah, it was, that was awesome. It was a great Saturday night. You know, I didn't have any other plans, so it worked out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> hopefully, I was able to. Hopefully, I was able. To, I was a good feeling for you guys. I pre. I no, you're <laughs> wonderful. Uh, you know, and, yeah, and like I said, you know, I, I, again, it, you know, eternal optimist. But like, you know, when when we, you know, we quickly had to figure out the Zoom thing. To, yeah. to keep doing the podcast and i was like all right well let's find people that we know that are in other states because yeah. the difference if they're in another state or down the street like we might as well right. reach out you know yeah yeah absolutely. 
So I appreciate that you uh, you answered and and were willing to come. Yeah, on. thanks for taking the time out to hang out with us, man. It's uh, hey, no no problem. Good I, I appreciate time. It. Like I said, this is this has been a blast. You guys are you guys are doing a good thing. I, I think it's awesome, and uh, look forward to having a drink with you guys when we come back. For sure, man. We'll give you some, uh, we'll we'll try some good bourbons with you. Yeah, we'll let yeah, you. Yeah, you, know you guys uh, gotta give me a recommendation. What's uh, what's the one again? The one that you had uh, back, Nick? Oh, Blattens. Blattens and and. That, yeah. What's the other one that you have, Ian? That's so I'm drinking uh, Henry McKenna. Henry McKenna. And to be Black. fair, both of these are pretty hard to find. Okay. So, uh, but, I, but again, I don't know how Virginia is, so maybe you'll be we'll, okay. Ian, it's a so we'll, do, we'll, have, we'll have Ian put a list together for you. Just yeah, put some absolutely. good bourbons yeah, down and send them to him. Yeah. And uh, you can look, at, look out for them. And then we could, do, uh, we could do another Zoom. We'll do a bourbon review mm -hmm. with you. You can try it for the first time. Yeah, dude, that, sounds like a, that sounds like a plan. Maybe we will put together a uh, a top ten list of like uh, starter bourbons. Okay. Yeah. We'll put it out on like Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that, and see what other people have to say about it. We could do that for sure. Good you idea. guys, you guys definitely, definitely. Very cool. I'm down. For sure. All right. Well. Scotty, yeah. thanks so much, dude. Uh, oh, no appreciate you and your uh, your amazing dad robe. Dude, very jealous. You gotta get the, and then, like, even dude, you're not you're not official until you get the robe and the and the UGG. Oh, oh dude, yeah, the house shoes, man, that's perfect. It's official, man. When when I come home from work, there you go, there you go. When you come home from work, you get out like I I come home now and just get right in the shower. Did yep. I get out? And it's like give me my robe and give me my UGGs. Great, some yep. fantastic. It's, like, it's perfect. Very cool. <laughs> Nothing so, better than that. I need to get a dad robe. Yeah, yeah, you, I, you, I don't you, have a dad robe, but maybe I should. Maybe we should get some uh, talking dads dad robes. There you go. Well, there's you an idea. Can, you guys, hey, you guys can review some robes. There you go. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Dad robes, <laughs> new line. Dad yep. robes. All right, Scotty, be good. Uh, I appreciate you. Um, oh, we haven't done this in a while, but uh, for everyone listening slash watching, if you haven't already, please. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and then of course your favorite favorite podcast. podcast. And then of course www.thetalkingdads.com. Check it out. Uh, Get some of this swag too here. Uh, we got our on merch website. up for sale, and then uh, we've also been killing it on these bourbon blogs. So, Scotty, actually, that's a really good. That's a good place for you to learn. Yeah, find right, right, some uh, the bourbon something new. Huge. All right, yeah. Yeah. Is it on? Uh, was it on? You guys have an Instagram or what? It's, uh, it's on our go on our website. Okay. So the talking dads. Uh, you can check out our our blog is all of our bourbon reviews. Okay. We got a shop with all of our gear, and then of course links to all of our stuff. So, uh, but yeah, definitely Instagram. You know all that kind of stuff. Sweet. Sweet. All, all right, right, man. I'll get, to, I'll get some merchandise and I'll get on the uh, bourbon game next time. Right, next man. time we talk, I'll be a, a seasoned vet. Hopefully. Oh like yeah, man. I like it. Congrats on being a dad, dude. Yes, uh, treat Cole like uh, like you'll you'll never love anything else again, and I know that you will because you've had wonderful example from Wombat. So um, definitely have fun with it, enjoy it, and I appreciate you. Yes, All sir. right, guys. It was a pleasure. All right, All right take, care, you take care, man. Go get some take sleep. Care. All right, likewise. Later. <laughs> later. Hey guys, if you love what you just heard or watched. And we know you did. Do us a solid and hit that thumbs up. Share with your friends and throw us a comment. Literally about anything. Your support legit keeps us going. Oh, and don't forget to give us that five-star rating. We really appreciate you.